All right. I take it that means we're live. Hello. Um, Go on, sorry. Sorry. I I no longer have muting powers, but this is this is my bit. I get I I get to do the introductions, right? All right. So we are live here for a one shot. And for some reason, once again, they've let me DM. They don't learn their lesson. And but here with me, I have uh, two familiar faces previously off Hemlora. We have Sam. Hello. Whatever direction you're in, I, I don't actually know nope. where I am on this overlay. Uh, give us a wave. And Jane. Hello. Hello. And we also have, I believe, three new faces to the stream. Or one returning face from the Pantheon one shot. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. Yes. Um, I don't. I don't actually know what names you prefer to use in streams. So I just give them a wave. <laughs> Hello. All right. And well, I don't see any reasons for delay. Let's just play some D and D. It's, I feel like it's a long time since we've been playing D and D. It was since this morning. It feels like a long time. I do not have a problem. Oh, actually, I have a job. Uh, he I've, does. I've, I've been given yes. a job. Um, so for a quick, quick, quick announcements. Oh, I'm about to get them out of the end. way now. Oh, did they end down the beginning? Okay, double announcements. Same just, which just right now. Yeah, just I mean, it's just super quick. Next week, Pantheon, um, the Greek mythological heroes, uh, starts back up next Friday, six six thirty Eastern time. That's PM. And then next week is Party Foul, uh, seven PM Eastern time. Um, sort of a home game feel to it. Gonna be quick, gonna be fun. Fighting goblins, classic D&D stuff. 7 p.m. Eastern, that's party foul. That's it, and we're done. Okay, all right. Well, in that case, bring you to tonight's one shot. Secrets of Yolanda Bright. So, in the city of Hillcrest, the wealthy young socialite, Lady Xanthe Goldenwood, has setting out an advert to the local Adventurers Guild, to all the heroic societies of the city, asking to employ a bunch of brave heroes for a very important task that she had. You see, Lady Goldenwood has a problem with her, her neighbour, um, Miss uh, Yolanda Bright, who is encroaching on her territory a little too much at court. And... You know, you've got to defend your position at the top of the pole. So she has hired the finest, or attempted to hire the finest. You see, she sent out these letters, and no response came. She posted an advert board, and no response came. So at her wit's end, the Lady Xanthe threw open the doors of her fine Hillcrest mansion to the first five people that stumbled her way. The first of these people being none other than Raka Tilbor. Ah, yes, Raka Tilbor. Uh, known throughout lands as a, as a family of gem crafters, the Tilbors, uh, and you can see it in this guy's armor. He's a little squat dwarf with a big kind of golden spiky beard like you took Goku and turned him upside down and stuck him on your chin. <laughs> uh, he has a, a, a helmet with like a little pointy horn sticking out of it uh, and carries a big great axe uh, and his armor is adorned with, with uh, different rubies and uh, uh, very fine patterns but even though it is just a breastplate. Alright. And the set the second one to stumble through her door, lured by the promise of payment, was none other than Asha Veltras, a stranger from a strange land. Yes, from a, a distant, distant land, and uh, following Raka quite closely, um, uh, maybe a, a bit stalkerish uh, to some. Uh, he has this kind of long, flowing. Uh, uh, blonde hair uh, and he's elf uh, by heritage but there's something a, a little bit off about him he's not quite uh, the normal elf you'd see uh, wandering the lands um, he's got this leather armor that's uh, kind of inlaid and engraved with this red kind of flowing 
uh, pattern. He carries a shield made of uh, calcified wood uh, and a sandstone scimitar at his side. All right. Next through the door came a pair of tabaxi cousins. Storm at sunset and Lone Peak. Lone Peak. Stop. Oh, Storm at sunset. Uh, she has the long, glossy, almost black leopard fur, and she's the colors are darkened to the point where you almost can't tell that there's a yellow gold in it. But when the light hits it just right, it shines. Uh, Lone Peak is, uh, he's six foot tall. Um, he's, he's real thin. Uh, he's got like all black fur, real glossy fur, real dark. Uh, he, he, he wears like all black clothes. He's got a rapier on one side and, and sheathed, and he's got like a dagger on the other side. Um, he walks around with like a rope coiled around his shoulder and, uh, he's got really good posture, uh, unusually good posture. That's kind of noticeable. And last to step through Lady Xanthe's door is Cranfuren Valiant Walker. Right. Uh, Cranfuren Valiant Walker is a seven foot tall minotaur. Um, they have dark gray brown fur and um, one horn that's like going straight, another one's a little curved, maybe bent, like it's got a crack in it um, from battle. Um, they have some pretty hefty looking armor. It's not well maintained whatsoever. Um, it looks like it's been cobbled together with people he's probably killed. Um, and it is it's ch it's chain mail, and so it hangs over his body. And he's got several different bannerments hanging from his waist. Um, whether they're his or not is unsure. And he has a, a large battle axe on the back and a great sword on the back as well, and two daggers and a mace. So he's heftily, heavily armored and just thumps in. <laughs> <laughs> into wherever he's going. Well, please take a seat. Now you're all here. I think five should be sufficient for what I require here. Uh, I think Raka is going to, uh, <laughs> as he sees Krauferen walk into the door, uh, he's going to say, oh, Is this the beast we're to slay? And he's going to pull his very sword. Very nice <laughs> there shall be no beast slaying required today. Mm, disappointing. And he'll put his axe back to where it's resting this, place it usually is. This is not that sort of job. There should be no beast slaying. There should be no looting. There should be no door bashing or goblins. Just no goblins. This is a perfectly simple and easy to complete task for it that I have for the five of you. Now, if you would all turn to your left, your left, not my left. You will see through the window that, that, that through the a house across the road. Yes, you can all see it. Now, that is the house that belongs to Yolanda Bright. Yolanda is a young upstart at court. It's quite a, a troublemaker. And I, I want to know what her deal is. How does someone? come from nothing and rise so fast. No, no one does that without some kind of devious, insidious badness. Hmm. You're jealous, and I'll point at her. Uh, no, no, I'm merely concerned for the security of the rest of court. Not jealous in the slightest. Now, you want us to kill her? No, 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 no. As I said, no slaying should be required. Tonight... Capture the kidnap. I've done this. No, 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 no. Tonight, Lady Yolanda is away at the ball, which I shall myself shortly be attending. Okay? Now, whilst she is away at the ball, what I need the five of you to do is go to her house get into her house and find out what she's up to. Then find some evidence of what she's up to and bring it back here. Without, of course, alerting the city guard or causing 
any vast amount of destruction. That sounds perfectly doable, yes? Hmm, uh, sounds good. Mm, are yeah. you sure we don't need to maim her in any way? She won't even be there. There should be nothing mm. other than a few security precautions in place. <laughs> so, Bitok payment. That you will be well compensated. Now, How well? Very well. This we'll rope is very expensive, so we need lots of money. Yes, yes, you will have plenty of money. Look at my hand. I can afford to pay you well. Depending, of course, on how good a job you are capable of. How doing. nice does this lady's house look? <laughs> very nice. Very nice? Okay. Like, nice. obviously very nice. Like, obviously very nice. There's excessive amounts of gilt and gold braid on stuff. It does not need gilt and gold braid on it. There's lots of velvet. Things, little things in cases that just look like they're expensive. Do you ever bought rubies or, or gems from the Tilbors? I, I, I don't handle my own purchasing. Hmm. I have a man for that. Now, any questions pertinent to the task at hand? What time does she normally leave for these parties? She is one of those infuriating early people. One of the reasons I hate her so much. Um, she should be leaving in about 10 minutes or so. And let's see, it's currently around around eight. She'll, she should be out till midnight. You've got plenty of time. What are we looking for exactly? Any evidence of nefarious deeds. And from... where, where is the best place to find this evidence? In her We're house. just looking at the whole house? Well, I, I've not been to her house. She's my arch enemy. Oh. Never yeah. heard of uh, keeping your enemies close. <laughs> She's also my next door neighbor. Well, you've never been inside, so you cannot tell us any likely placements of the rooms we might need to check. Well, I assume she has some bedrooms and some living rooms and some servants' rooms. It's not a very big house, not compared to mine. Peek. Peek. Yes, cousin. She doesn't know what floors or anything they are on? She seems very stupid. It's got two floors. Look, if you would all go to the window, you could observe the house. Cranfran walks over and with their body blocks the rest of the window. <laughs> all right. As the minutes are blocked. Move uh, over. As, I cannot see. Cran Cranfran. Mm. Make me a perception check. <laughs> I'm really good at those. The rest of you, the window is currently being blocked by Minotaur. Minotaur butt. Is Shit. it the only window? <laughs> 18. That's, that's actually pretty good. So was it the only window? That's the only window in the current room, yes. You can see um, the stretch of um, Lady Xanthe's own lawn, then a street, and then what looks to be a large stone wall about mm, 15 feet high. And beyond that, you can see rising up a two-story house. Not a very large one. You can see on from this side you're looking at, you can see the lights shining through um, one sort of window opening out onto a balcony on the upper floor and a light shining from one of the windows on the lower floor as well. Hmm. Uh, and that's do you it. mind if we rough the place up some? This place, yes. No, not 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 here. Or the other one. No, not point at the house. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is Cranfiern still in the way? Yes, Cranfiern has turned, but is still in the way of the, of the window. Can move, you big cow. We need to see too. Mm. 
don't tell me to move. He moves out of the way. At this point, I think you realize he's dragged mud off his hooves into the house and is just leaving <laughs> as they're walking. Well, circles of hoof prints everywhere. I, I uh, will be going and making obvious steps over the mud and moving around to the edge of the window to peek out. All right. Oh, I'm pe peeking out where I'm the Minotaur. You can see there is a house. Um, you can see now currently the house, the house is slightly blocked by a carriage that appears to be pulling up at the front gate of the house. Cousin, there is a, there is a carriage. It looks like she is getting ready to leave. Yes, maybe it's time for us to go soon. Uh, yes, yes, off, off you go. Hold uh, on. Yes, one quick thing. Um, you mentioned some security measures. Oh, everyone has security <sighs> measures. I hired one of the best wizards in the city to do mine. Right. <laughs> what, she, can I, you sniff wizards? <clears throat> no, poopery. Right. You know, there's some truth to that. Incense is used in a lot of their... Uh, Magics. Uh, yes. But yeah, I, I assume she may have uh, hired a wizard herself. I, I, my housekeeper deals with all that for me. I, I don't. Have to I step away from person. the window and I pull out some dark gray wraps and I start wrapping my arms all the way up to the, to the, basically to the knuckles and back. Mm. How long is this ball? How long do we have? From now? She looks back up at the clock on her wall again. I'd say you have four hours. Mm -hmm. Maximum. Maybe three. Doesn't matter how long early. we have. How much? <sighs> it depends on what information you can bring me. 500 gold pieces? We'll take half now, half later. Uh, no, I'm paying when you bring me information. Yeah, this, the cow is right. This Anyone is the way things now, are done here. Leave. This we take half also. now. I'll, I, hmm. no. Those of you who wish to complete this task and get paid after can get paid. Those of you who do not, who feel they need money up front and don't feel I have the resources to pay can are welcome to leave. I don't doubt you can't pay. I doubt you will pay. What if we do not find anything? Well, then I'll give you 200 for the effort. Then give us 200 now, we will get whatever left after. <laughs> Make me persuasion check. Okay, great. I'm great at every roll. <laughs> I hope you know this. Every stat I have is really good. Uh, for the Twitch watchers, you can actually look at his uh, character sheet in D and D Beyond. Uh, let's <laughs> see. see all of the negatives. <laughs> uh, persuasion. That's a hey, a fifteen. Hey. If you so much of think about running off on me, you will never work in this town again, and I will find someone to come and kill you. I will find someone to find someone to come and kill you. Queen Farron's going to lean on this table. Like, both their hooves just poof. Lean the money. table leaning. You can try. Grab now the money. get the this bench. sorted for me. Watching Crown Farron leave angrily, I'll uh, look at uh, look at Miss um, Goldenwood here and say, uh, don't be hasty on those assassins. We may need to flee, leave town for, mm, I don't know, a few weeks before we return. <laughs> if we are uh, caught out, uh, laying low is um, something many adventurers do. It's <laughs> par for the course. Just of course, we would send a message or something. Thank you. I'm glad someone here speaks sense. Hmm. Well, well, no. uh, walks in. As, are we going or what? <laughs> Yes, we'll be there. I've finished. We're coming. We're coming. With the wrapping, and I've started 
already wrapping my legs too. Yeah, on the way out, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna like lean over to the to one of the cats, which everyone's nearest to me, probably um, probably peak at this point. Uh, you guys are tabaxi, right? I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, I'm gonna say, listen, uh, you folks are known for being pretty stealthy. Uh, what do you think we should do about this? I mean, obviously, we're not the ones necessarily to make this decision. Is let let us plan when we get outside. One one moment, and then uh, Peak's gonna uh, turn to Lady Golden and say, uh, "Have fun at the ball, fair lady." And then he's gonna do like an exaggerated bow, and then turn and leave. Yes, <clears throat> and g- good luck. I finish wrapping my legs, and <laughs> I make sure everything's all you know organized on me. The the wraps aren't loose, and then I follow my cousin out. Nice. All right. It probably makes you like even more slender than you previously looked as a cat. So you probably have these like really thin, like forearms and really thin legs, except for the muscle tone, of course. Like a noodle arm. Oh yeah. No. A noodle no. arm. <laughs> almost like a almost like a cat whose legs have been dipped in water. The fur is now all flat against the skin. Mm. Totally. Whenever we walk outside, um, is it uh, the you said there was a two foot there's a fifteen foot high stone wall? Yes, that, um, that's that's at the edge. Of is there is there a gate to get to Gil, Gil, Goldenwood Guildwood's backyard on the side of her house? Um, like, or is it just like her house is? They're, face, they're, the width of, of they're facing each other, sort of. Oh, okay. So there's a house, Lady Goldenwood's house, surrounded by its wall with its gate. There's a road. Then there is Lady oh, okay. um, across Lady the street, Sunday yeah. Bride's okay. house across the street with its own wall and its own gate. Okay, I thought I thought they were next door neighbors, not across your neighbors. Okay, cool. Yeah. Big enough that they've got a little road in the between. Okay, need access. Uh, you walk outside and see uh, Cranfiran standing tall, both weapons like sheathed, and just staring at this house. Uh. Maybe we should get him out of sight. He's he's very conspicuous. Yes, like go out the back. Out the back and a long way around. We could leave the, the Minotaur as a distraction. Uh, I'm right here. Yeah, you will you stand there. Everyone will look at you because you're magnificent. And then uh, we'll walk around the back or something. How will he meet up with us? Um, Wall doesn't look too tough. Sort of cracks his neck. That's one way, I suppose. I, I had an idea that we could pose this as a, <clears throat> perhaps, like a break-in. <laughs> Minotaur definitely fits the bill. But that's exactly what we're doing. No, but I mean, uh, but make it obvious. Hmm. An interesting idea, but something I'd play with. What if we, what if we climb to the roof and get in through the top? That's possible. It's much quieter. Could you unlock the front door for us if you did that? Uh, yes. Probably. I have my tools. Mm. That's worth a shot. Yes. Cats go climb roof. I'll wait here. Come along, cousin. Let us let us climb to the roof. Okay. Yes. So yes. Just to clarify, there's a wall around the property, and then there's a garden, then there's the house. Yeah. There's a guard? Oh. Garden. 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 Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I was like, yeah. let's fucking go. Whatever you call it. I mean, do I need to translate here? Go. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look left and right. Areas of leafiness. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to look left and right in the street yet? here. Yes. Has the sunset sun has set. It is dark. But All right. quick over the wall and then i'm gonna put my hands out to sort of give you a lift up but it's really only maybe two feet off of the ground because <laughs> i'm a dwarf I, so it doesn't really help it. much I, I take it so i'm gonna oh, um, roll up, jump roll up athletics it. with advantage you are being helped there you go look at that <laughs> i mean the minotaur could just throw you over the wall yeah <laughs> yeah i think my friend looks to think and says i could throw you uh it's it's fine, big cow. I think I got it. Uh, so I rolled a 16, and my athletics is a plus one. So, yep. Yep. Up and over the wall. Wow. Oh, wow. Pe- Peek's going to try to try to jump up on his own. All right. 
right. Make that athletics check. Uh, 24. Jesus. I'm very athletic. Very up and over <laughs> that wall. Oh, oh, you said athletics, not acrobatics? Athletics, yes. Climbing a wall. Okay, 18. <laughs> Still good. Jumping off the wall. Right. Acrobatics. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <clears throat> so we make it over the wall? I, what do we see on the other side? Wait, do we make it over the wall or do we land on top of the wall? Depends. What are you aiming for? If you want to be on top of the wall, you can be on top of the wall. If you want to have gone straight over, you can go. Straight. I want to be on top of the wall, but as low as possible to the wall so I don't stand out against any light that might be shining. Mm-hmm. Pretend you're a gargoyle. And lone peak. Uh, Peak's just going to jump right over. Okay. So on the other side of the wall, Peak, you find yourself in some bushes. And if you're both if you're both looking around, make me make me perception checks, please. Looking and listening around this dark, shadowed garden. You can see it's sort of reaching you're probably about at this point about fifty feet away from the house itself. Um but yes, what was your perception? Eight. Sixteen. Alright. Peak, there are a lot of bushes. The leaves are kind of getting in the way of your vision. Okay. Um, storm or Miss Sunset. Miss Sunset, whichever you would prefer. Sunset's fine. Sunset. Um, you can see sort of the shadowy reach of these a few bushes, an, ornam- an ornamental statue of someone holding an urn up, very contemplatively. Surrounded by rockery, and beyond that, the veranda around the house itself. But it's less, it's less what you can see, it's what you can hear. Because listening out in the gardens, you can hear a low growl and a soft padding movement of something moving in the garden. Something. By the voice hand way it moves almost dog like. Heading back on your head, yeah. Closer <laughs> towards <laughs> Cousin around. Cousin, they have a dog. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I go along the, the 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 stone wall at the top. I'm slunk close to the wall crawling around to get to the statue that you were just describing. And I'm going to hide behind that and see if I can see more, um, see if where the dog is coming from. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that cat scent. Make me, make me a stealth check. <laughs> this is a really good facial expression. <laughs> that, that, you nailed it. <laughs> I've seen cats do that. 14. As you sort of close around towards where the statue is, you can see now between the statue and the house, the shape of this dog sort of turning its head back and forth. And it's, it's, it's a large dog, almost like, almost mastiff-like in build, but Larger, perhaps, than dogs you've seen before. Would you say this is a dire situation, Dungeon Master? What What do I pick up from the scent? It doesn't really have so much of a scent. Like, you can see dog, and you can hear dog. You can't. But I can't smell it. No. Mm. Whatever this dog is, it's not quite like dogs you've encountered before. Peek's gonna try to stealth up next to sunset. All right, so make me a stealth check if you try to slip through these bushes after your cousin. Uh, twenty-one. All right. You're both up next to this. Both up by this. Are you still up on the wall, sunset? Yes, I'm still up on the wall, but I'm starting to. Um, I'm keeping an eye on wherever the dog is, and uh, I am going to carefully try to get to on top of the statue. Alright. Jump from the statue from the wall. How's the distance? The distance, uh, probably about only a ten foot jump. Ten foot jump? Yeah. Okay. 
you want me to um i think you should be able to uh jump this uh being as you are mm -hmm. a monk yeah yeah all right so that yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna jump and then i'm going to try to you know cling to the upper half of the statue all right ride it like a backpack so currently sunset's yeah. at the top of the statue peak you're down the base of this statue mm -hmm. The other right, right, three of you still back in back on the other side of the wall. Hey, uh, listen, a, a big guy. Uh, you think you can throw me up there? They're they're moving around. And they're not saying nothing, but uh, they, uh, I'm getting kind of nervous standing out here. Uh, yes, I'll throw you. It's like okay. I grab <laughs> I'm gonna hold without without, right without waiting. Grab the back of Raka's like armor and just. <laughs> 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 That, sound, that seems like a horrible little. idea, but quite fun. Me too. Make me an athletic check, Confer, and this is for how far these people okay. are flying. Nice. Let me do that. Natural 20. Hell yeah. Plus We're how going much? straight through the window into the house. It's a, it's a, it's a total of 24. Okay. That's nice for Rock. You want me to roll for Asher as yes. well? Raka, make me... Uh, Maybe an acrobatics check for landing. All right. <laughs> we're going to try this. I have a cool thing that we're going to give it a shot here. See if it works. Huh. Oh, that's a, that's a what nine. What is that? <laughs> what? Magic. <laughs> I have magic. Oh. It's a nine. Magic dice. Uh, so right. what, was the, what was the addition? Was you said athletics, please? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was saying, no, I said acrobatics. <laughs> uh <laughs> 11. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you come flying through the air and once crash bang in the center of a, of a what feels yeah, like a very spiky rose bush. I don't brace myself with my arms because they're both holding onto the great axe and I just hit the ground and like roll. I Then I just stand up as soon as I can and pretend that I meant to do that. Okay. <laughs> You take three points of damage in doing so, <laughs> but you are now in the garden. All right, I'm gonna, then going to get really quiet and be like, and guys. Do we see you him? Do, you see him come flying past, you see him going and crashing the bushes, and you see the dog turn from sniffing around and turn its full body and its attention. It starts bounding towards where Raka just landed. Confer it. Are you throwing Asher as well? Yeah, so as after they threw Raka, they spun, grabbed Asher's back, continued that spin, and just like lobbed them up there at the Olympics. Like a discus throw? Uh, yeah, like a discus throw, just like a straight turn. Athletics this. Here we go. Um, not as good. That's a 14. Okay. Asher? Acrobatics, which you're going over this wall, just but... uh, <laughs> let's see, fifteen. Okay, so you don't get thrown with quite as much force. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit lighter, to... probably. A bit lighter. You like manage a much softer landing and some softer bushes about um, ten feet or so away from Raka oh. and away from the dog creature that is bounding very fast towards Raka. Dog, dog creature, dog creature, dog creature. <laughs> uh, that's not good. Panic, uh, uh, wild shape into a wolf. All right, as is you wild shape into a wolf. <laughs> Everything's a dog. You're a druid? <laughs> as, you know it. <laughs> as this dog comes bounding towards Raka, closing the distance, uh -huh. I would like you, everyone, including Conferron on the far side of this wall, roll me initiative, please. After he does that, he goes, no, wait. <laughs> uh, Asher got 11. Okay, 11 for Asher. 10 for Sunset. 10 for Sunset. I'd say three for Raka. I rolled a one. I'm oh, eat wow. It. <laughs> Just eat it. You know, eat it. Uh, Pete got eight. Uh, I'm killing on these rolls. I got a 20. Cranfiron as, as at 20. Okay. I, that's a dirty 20. 30-20. Yeah. Oh, wait. We're supposed to add our initiative bonus, right? Yeah, it's probably a <laughs> dexterity, two yes. Uh, then, yeah, that's a 10 plus 3, so 13. Ooh, a plus 3. Look at this. Uh, 
Okay. Your whole your plus is my entire <laughs> score. <laughs> Cranferin, you go first. What would you like to do? Great. What's this gate look like? Um, the gate is, is it sort of a bit further down the wall. Is this nice sort of iron barred gate with a lovely, beautiful wrought iron work and this really big fancy looking lock on it? Okay. Um, and for for this wall, are there like does it look like there, there's handholds or anything? Or is it just like a slick stone wall? It, it's a brick wall on this side, pretty smooth. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, the only thing I, he could think to do is <sighs> fine, and <laughs> walk over to this gate um, and look at this lock. You said it's it's like, a, it's like a padlock, yeah? It's like this big, fancy-looking padlock with like sigil-like markings carved into it. Doesn't even notice. They have a minus one wisdom. They don't notice that. Um, I'm gonna grab Cranfiran grabs their great sword um, and goes to like slice it open to where they can uh, get through this gate. All right, roll me an attack. Great. Against... I'm sorry, stealthy players. One of my favorite things in D and D is letting the stealthy players go first and then <laughs> causing a massive wreck. <laughs> <through. laughs> you're 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 great. You're a distraction. I have plans. No. Uh, that, that's, roll. that's a six to hit. Clang. <laughs> this sword hits the metal of this lock. <gasps> the, the lock's not broken. The gate what? is still locked. <laughs> you what? Can see it. You can see. <laughs> oh, I can. Great. What's going to um, happen on the other side? Uh, I guess Cranfarin puts the puts it away, and I guess the, to end their action, they. I'll pull you off then, and starts grabbing the the rod to get ready to pull just this entire gate free, or try to. That's my turn. <laughs> All right. So, and you get front row seats about sort of thirty feet away from you, nearer this fountain. You see as this dog creature lunges towards Raka, snapping at you with its jaws. Get away, creature! Uh, arr, arr, arr. Will a six will a sixteen hit you, Raka? It does not. It snaps towards you with your jaws, but its teeth don't close on you, and you can see like a front line leading to this black, shadowy dog-like form. I just kind of like back up and kick at it with my feet. Oh, away! Oh, oh, oh. All right, sunset. Your turn, Asher. You will be next. All right, I am going to measure the distance between me and the dog right now while I'm on top of the statue, and I'm going to do that cat. Get ready to pounce, and I'm going to pounce on it. And then I want to bite it with my jaws on the scruff of its neck and uh, do the, the rabbit kick with my back feet. All right. Ooh, Roll damn. what sounds like some unarmed attacks. So it's like this, it's like this really rapid, like, you're just like, all right. Rabbits are amazing. Sunset did like the little butt wiggle that cats do and then. And, like jumped okay. off. Twelve plus five, that's uh seventeen for the first one. That will hit. <laughs> All right. And then it's four plus nine for the second one. That will not hit. All right. So the damage for the first one is two plus three. So five. Uh, Bludgeoning, no. Yeah, bludgeoning damage, unless it's claws. You can choose as a cat. You can punch oh, well, or you can a claw. No, I'm, I'm using my claws on this one. So then, yeah, that's uh, two plus three. That's five uh, slashing damage. Okay. Dog creature is not happy with this. It's being attacked by a cat. This is unpleasant. Ha ha, serves you right. Ha 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 ha. But Asha, mm -hmm. it's your turn. Lone Peak, you will be next. All right, this is about to turn into quite the feral brawl. Uh, Asher will bear his uh, fangs in his wolf form and snarl <laughs> and just uh, pounce on uh, kind of, he was going to go for the neck, but there's already a, an assailant on there. So he'll go for the under underneath and try and bite at the belly of this dog. Uh -huh. um, and with pack tactics, I should have advantage on this. So we'll go ahead and roll. Uh, 13 plus four is 17. That for for yes. seven of piercing damage as the fangs sink in. Okay. Who on the belly, too. Yeah. This dog lets out this howling noise, and 
you can hear an answering howling noise from around the side of the house. <clears throat> Lone Peak, it is your turn. Is that... uh, Peak's going to say under his breath, I hate dogs. And then he's going to run in and uh, he's going to try to make uh, two attacks, one with his raper and one with his dagger. All right. All your attacks. Oh, that's not very good at all. Uh, 11? 11 and, will not hit. Uh, 15. A 15 will hit. Okay. Uh, one. Uh, seven damage. Seven damage. All and right. uh, he's going to make a stealth attack too. Because because everyone else is up in me. Attack, attack, yeah. Sorry. Attack damage? Yes, you do. Six damage. All right. This dog is not looking as happy. But as this dog gets slashed and stabbed and clawed at, round the side of the house, running up. The sec form of the second dog it leaps to the aid of its trapped companion and it's gonna go for it's gonna go for Lone Peak as the last vicious stabbing assailant. So you hear this of paws running on grass behind you, and then you feel the weight as it lunges towards you and Watch out, there's another one. And that will hit you. Damn. <laughs> As it goes oh. out from nowhere and oh. rolls a natural 20. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's right. I'm getting them out of the way now. It's going to be a good night. All right. Where's my, where's my D6s? All right. And I need you to make me a strength saving throw, please, Pete. Oh, I good. I'm very strong. 17. Okay. Well, you're, you're strong enough. You manage to stand your ground and not be knocked over. It's creature bowls into you. Um, that is 17 points of piercing damage as its jaws close on you. You might be unconscious. <laughs> uh, ow. <laughs> Peek, Peek is just gonna like let out like a, a cat like yelp. Okay, Raka, it's your turn. Cranf Cranferin, you'll be up next. <clears throat> All right, so um, not seeing an opportunity to attack this one that's directly in front of me, I, at least the first one, uh, because there's too many jaws affixed to it. <laughs> uh, I will turn to the one that just uh, attacked Peak and, and swing my uh, mighty greatsword horizontally uh, across it and see if I can knock it off. Okay. All right, so... Mm... <laughs> you see what that is? <laughs> is that a one? Yes. That's a one! That would be the second one that I've rolled with these dice. Peak, I think just someone should dodge out the way as this, as this sword comes sort of swinging very close to your head and your ear. And it's not close enough to the dog that's attacking you. But yes. Um, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, just just threaten this dog and try to get its attention. Like, ah, let him go. Rah! You know, get in its face. All right. Confirm. So I like to imagine he's been trying to pull on this gate. Um, but just because I got to get it out of the way and do as much as possible, um, I s take a few steps back, sheath my sword, and like bow a little bit, and um, sort of ready my feet, my hooves dragging on this on the on the uh, the floor, the ground, um, and I'm gonna charge at this gate um, with my horns. That's an attack. I don't know if you guys know this. Minotaurs have a horns attack, which is awesome. Um, but in the meantime, you hear like running with loud, the louds like to this gate. I guess I'll roll to hit. On the gate. A hit. Best heist ever. 
<laughs> hey man, it's gonna look uh, like a break in. <laughs> hey, it's a twenty one to hit. That will hit. That will hit the gate. You can. It's a D six. Um, hey Max, that's a uh, eight damage total. On this, I'll, see, I'll see with the run up. You you hear the lock holds, the hinges do not. Yes. <laughs> Are you just wearing a gate now? This wrought iron gate just crashes inwards. <laughs> nice. Now being worn by, by a minotaur. Yeah, so as, as like fly. running forward, it's still on me as I... <sighs> where are they? And I unsheath my sword and look around get ready for battle. That's All my right. <laughs> The gate's still on the horn. <laughs> the gate is still on the horns. The, the first dog is in, like trying to bend its head when it's trying to get a bite at uh, sunset. Uh, I do not believe that will hit, because that is a 14 to hit. 14? 14. I'm a 14 as well. <gasps> I forgot to level level threes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit! Maybe, <laughs> maybe one of these would have been okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I need you to make me that uh, that strength saving throw, please. Use your monk power. You don't need monk power. You need cat power for this. That's mm -hmm. twelve. So, you, right? So Can it's jaws. That right? It's jaws close into you. You take eight points of damage, and you're thrown and knocked prone. Oof. Must roll higher than that. <laughs> yeah, you need, maybe maybe you do need monk power for, <laughs> for that. But it is, now your, it is now your turn, Sunset. Hey. Awesome. Prone on the ground right. about ten feet away from this dog, which is currently being piled on by Asher the Wolf and Peak, and then there's Racker facing off against, like... Dog number two. Okay, so yeah, no. Um, I see they're still doing that one. I just got thrown off. Uh, I am going to uh, charge at the one that Raka is facing now. And I am going to um, use my claws again. And I'm hissing this time. All right. All right. The hissing will probably help hit you. Yeah, hit the creature. No, yeah. The, 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 now yeah, you do psychic one. damage because of the the hiss. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> totally. That. I don't know. Maybe it'll bring the dog's attention to me instead. Uh, six plus five. That's thirteen for the first one. <laughs> and a natural twenty plus Ooh. five. So the thirteen five. will hit, and the natural twenty will definitely hit. Nice. All right. This dog gonna get punched. <laughs> three. I'm pretty sure that's animal abuse. Three. Plus so the first one, one cage. is uh, it animal four, abuse both of them are and animal? the second one is six. Both of those slashing. Okay. It's like pit fighting. Pit fighting, indeed. <laughs> In which case, we come to Asha. Hmm. All right. So now that I have my dog alone, I think uh, the original. Um, How, you still have. I think Lone Peak is still involved in this. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, Asher in his wolf form is going to start circling around the beast uh, for a moment, just kind of waiting for the right time to strike, and then he'll uh, take a page out of the uh, the dog's book and leap at it and try and knock it prone as it attacks. Uh, okay. Because Lone Peak is there, I have advantage on my attack. 18 plus 4, that certainly hits. Um, and we will do ooh, pretty good damage too. 9 piercing damage, and he needs to make a strength saving throw. Okay. He does not need to make a strength saving throw because as you as you close in on this creature, if its form sort of slumped down and then its whole form dissipates. What? Melting away into the shadow of the night. Dog is gone. I wanted to eat that and I am sad. <laughs> so yeah, so the dog that was on you peak is gone. The other one is very much there. Uh, how, how far is that one from me? About 
10 feet or so. Okay. Uh, uh, Peek will see that uh, his cousin's in danger. So he's going to um, he's gonna run in and uh, go for the double stab again. All right. Uh, 17 and a 13. Uh, both of those will hit. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Uh, eight damage. And eight, eight more damage. Eight damage and eight more. Uh, yeah. Wow. One, one was the dagger and one was the rapier. Yeah, no, no. And then uh, two d sixes, right? Uh, one. For the stealth, the sneak attack. Yeah, is it two d six at this level? Uh, yes. Yeah. I know how rogues work. Six, six damage. Yeah. Six, six damage. Yeah. And then uh, he's going to use his action, his uh, bonus action to disengage and move as far away as a dash will take him. Okay. So as you disengage and as you draw back, sort of like daggers flying everywhere, the second dog dissipates into the shadows of the night. And I fall onto the floor. Uh, and you fall onto the floor. <laughs> and you are no longer in initiative. Are you all right, cousin? Cursed I'm wizards. Fine. Come through the gates. Is it over already? Crawford, we've come this far. Front door, and I point at the front door of the mansion. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Uh, Sheath the sword. You still have the gate. Yeah, he's gonna take the gate off, and I think gonna use it as a shield now, if if possible. How big is this gate? I mean, it's like a double leaf sort of gate. It's quite a large gate. It's also got gaps in it because it's like a real iron, like barred okay. gate. So how okay. well it would work as a shield <laughs> is the basis for it. Not all it. For, for my own amusement, I guess. Then they'll take the gate off and hold on, go over to that opening and place the gate, but have it backwards so it looks like it's still set. I guess. <laughs> it's a slightly at an angle, but good enough. Uh, and walk over. Walk, walk back to the group. Yeah. So sorry. Have- Heard battle wanted to make sure you all lived there were dogs dogs i, I think i think peak was <clears throat> hurt quite badly please check on him is i'm not feeling very good mm-hmm. i've i've had better days how bad how badly hurt are you peak very very badly oh. <laughs> very, it's, uh, it's not looking good <laughs> I, I turn i take you by the shoulder i turn you so that I can see where the damage is. Uh, as that goes on, Asher will unwild shape uh, and approach the other side of Lone Peak. Uh, here, here, I'll, I'll fix you up and cast uh, Cure Wounds. Ooh. Uh, just first level for now. Really glad uh, somebody has it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that'll be eight healing. Nice. That's what I got for now. Uh, thank you, friend. That's much better. Well, wouldn't have wouldn't want to have you bleeding everywhere and leave a trail or something. Well, well, bleeding. Uh, do you want to get this then? Since I'm bleeding. Just you use your wraps. Out? Don't you have wraps? Well, I'd have to take them off my hands. They're supposed it, to stay there for a reason. It's fine. I, c- I can do you as well if that's needed. Um, cast another cure wounds. Uh, this one. One point less, so seven. Are you sure you want me to go through the door, or do you want to still climb the roof? I I think they know we're here now. You were very loud at the front gate. I was loud. Well, someone was loud, and it wasn't me. I was hiding in a bush. All of a sudden, boom, big door. Do you think they'll notice their guards are dead? Well, we're, they just vanished into smoke, and they didn't smell like dogs. No evidence, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Asher looks how, back how... to the gate. <laughs> the, uh, has... down. <laughs> the gate's behind us now, not even looking. Um, what's the door look like? Is, yeah. it, is, it, is it a hefty-looking door? Or I guess the of... entrance of the house, sorry. Yeah. Ahead of you, you can see there is a two-story house. On the, on the front of the house, which is the side you're currently facing, I think being on the side of the gate, you can see that there is a veranda that wraps around the front of the house. There's a set of steps leading up, 
and then a sh short space and then this double door. You can see also on the ground floor in the front of the house, um, several windows and on the floor above, more windows. Are we sure we want to go through the front? Maybe the back will be better. Do we, um, do we, does anybody know if city guard walk the streets? Well, I mean, they probably do, right? Yeah, would we know that? Uh, if they just the, patrol? They will patrol. How often they patrol? Depends on the area, how fancy it is. Mm. <laughs> how many are needed at other events? Hmm. I suggest we try the back door, just in case. Okay. Um, I guess looking looking at the two cats and seeing how hurt they are, Cranfran will uh, turn, and you'll see them like sheath their sword and kind of squat a little bit and say, "Follow me." I'm gonna try and sneak <laughs> to this house. I'm probably like <laughs> six foot now, <laughs> instead of the seven, but just. <sighs> You're just trying to sneak up to the house? Maybe a stealth check. Great. Hey, guys, just so you know, I'm the best at stealth. <laughs> Holy shit. Actually, I don't have a minus in it. So, yeah, I'm pretty good. That's impressive. It's a, it's a 15. You feel really quite sneaky, which is quite impressive. <laughs> it's a very shadowy, dark garden. Lots of, lots of bushes. Lots of, like, bits of topiary, I guess. See, so he's still carrying the gate too, right? No, no, I put the gate back. Oh, you put the gate back? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right back where he found it. All right. I'm not, I'm not an animal. <laughs> back where he found it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, if he's walking off, I'm I'm going to follow him. But I'm going to be a little bit distant from him only because if he does screw up, I don't want to be caught in the light of it. So also sneakies. I, I say we're we're going around the left side of the house, if that matters. If that's where Crenfrian went. Okay, so you're yeah. heading up, heading around the left side of the house. So the veranda wraps around part of the left side of the house, and you see a second set of steps leading up to um, another door, mm -hmm. and then it continues around to the, the corner of the house where there's thicker bushes. And are you carrying around onto the reverse of the house? Uh, I guess uh, Crenfrey will look back and Piece point. Bracket just standing there. Uh, point at, at this new door. There goes another. And I'll try to point stop. back at the other one. No, let's let's use this one because if they look through the gate, they will see the front door. If we use this side door, they won't see us right away. Very smart, cousin. Let's use this one. Mm. You said you had uh, tools, right? Do you want to have a crack at it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give it a shot, and Peek's gonna sheath his uh, his weapons and uh, uses his, his uh, thieves' tool bag to try to pick the lock. Okay, so up up the steps, across the little area of veranda, you see this this single wooden door. Um, yes, make me roll me dexterity with proficient with your uh, adding your proficiency, presuming you're proficient in your thieves' tools. Yeah, uh, I think it's. Plus, I think it's a 20, but let me just double check. I, I rolled a 14. I think I have plus six to. Yeah, uh, 20. All right. The lock comes open. All right, let's 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 be very quiet. Uh, who wants to go first? I can if nobody else wants to. I will go as well. All right. Um, All right, so. We rolled yours. Everyone else, make roll your very quiet checks, otherwise known as stealth check. Uh, I just rolled a nine on the dice, and so that's an eleven. Thankfully, breastplate does not confer a disadvantage. <laughs> it's, uh, an eleven for Asher as well. I have eighteen. I have eighteen. I, as do well. I need a reroll as well? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you continue. It's only not very long since your last one. Okay, cool. You can roll it again if you want. I'll roll it again. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, uh, it could be bad. It, testing Everybody. fates here. Are, are the walls lined in China? It's just oh, please. <laughs> um, so this is disadvantage because I'm chainmail. So 10, um, 12. Okay. 
We've got two 11s, two 18s, and a 12, and a... I'm the I'm going first. Mm -hmm. I'm going in, and I'm going, s like, up against the wall. OK. And I'm checking everything that I can while I'm walking, uh, padding on the tips of my toes so that uh, I make as little noise as I can. OK, so as you enter in, you find yourself in a dining room. In the center of the room, there is um, a large polished wood table, not currently set. On the to the left hand side, there's a there is a door leading out of the room. On and on the left hand wall, there is a large dresser with a large amount of beautiful china crockery on display. On the right hand side, you see the two windows opening out from the veranda. And across from you, on the far wall, there is another door. This one larger and slightly fancier looking than the one to your left. OK. Uh, was anybody following me, or do I need to? Um, oh. I, so I said I would go. So I'd probably, you'd probably turn around and see Quinferen standing in the doorway, just their shadow cast against the moonlight, just looking with like piercing eyes and just watching. More of just like a presence to make sure you're OK and then following you. All right, well, I'm going to move in along the wall. Um, I'm going to point at two doors and which door do you want? Uh, Peek's still kind of putting away his like thieves tools and everything, but uh, yeah, he's going to hang back. Um, if you ask him in which door, he turns to, the, to everyone else um, and looks, looks to Asher and says, you left this or right. You noise of like chandelier meeting, like <laughs> clink, clink, clink. <laughs> Well, um, I'm oh, right-handed, cool. um, so we'll certainly go with the left. Turn back to sunset. Left. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to uh, crack open the door, peek through. It, does it open inward or outward? It opens... Or is it swinging? It's a swing door. Awesome. All right. Uh, if it has a little handle, I'm going to try to pull it inwards. Uh, to peek through to see if there's anybody there. Okay. Um, if it's a swing door, I'm going to assume it's a kitchen. As you pass, as you peek through, you can see, indeed, it appears to into a kitchen. Uh, maybe a perception check just to listen out for what else is going on around. Eighteen. Fifteen okay. plus three. All seems quiet in the kitchen. You can hear sound is in the wind of the trees outside and somewhere you can hear the sound of running water somewhere beneath your feet beneath my feet yes but the kitchen seems quiet and through the kitchen you can see there is another door that appears to lead onto another room okay before i go in i'm gonna come back out so this is the kitchen it's empty, but I hear running water. And there's another door on the other end of it. Or we can go through that door. What do you guys want to do? Cranfrian turns back to the rest of the group and relays it because they're still in the doorway. I'm probably back right. too to the doorway, like looking outwards as Peek is putting his tools away. Mm -hmm. These Chinese whispers chain of people. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> through kitchen or go right. We should uh, be looking Asher. We should be looking for like office or study or something like that. Kitchen. We don't need to go to the kitchen. Kitchen probably connected to the pantry. We mm. should. We should take other door. Find find office or, or study. Uh, or we could just uh, check every place. Mm. Well, we here. only have four hours. This try might, and, might not be enough time. Try try and like leave a, a little bit of space uh, for them to walk through. Um, and I'll say like, uh, you, you three go on, I'll, wa I'll stop hanging back. Asher will slide in and look up at the Minotaur and boop him on the nose and then shuffle in. Do that again and you'll die. Uh, I'm sorry. All right, so you're all in, are you all in the house now? Was it wet? It looks wet. If I touched it, it probably- It's like wet. super it was, wet. It was pretty moist. <laughs> Um, Cranfarin's staying sort of in that doorway entryway of the of that side door, um, but everyone else I think is going in. If, 
yeah, they're like following quietly behind everybody. Um, I'm not very quiet. <laughs> Some of you are being very quiet. Some of you mm, less so, but none of you are making excessive amounts of noise on the grand scale of things. All right. As Asher slid in here, he'll uh, produce flame in his hand and just have a little uh, ball of light so he can look around. And he's going to go up to the, the china and stuff and kind of look behind it, see if there's anything like, secret. Okay. Make me an investigation check. All right. Uh, just a straight roll for that one. So a nine. Nine. It's very nice china. Yeah, oh, it's uh... the stuff at the front is. The stuff behind... A bit cheaper looking, actually. Ah, keeping up appearances, it seems. Uh, well, I don't think there's anything in here. No, did you check the drawers? Uh, I'm. I mean, they probably just have silverware. Silverware, silverware, cupboards, china. Okay, so I, I almost think you should grab some of that and just put it in your backpack. Uh, they'll think it's a robbery. The silverware is a robbery. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, if you break it and steal the silverware, that is, by definition, a robbery. And that's why they'll think it's one as well. <laughs> uh, so Asher will take one silver spoon and put it in his pocket. <clears throat> you need to take the whole drawer. What's wrong with you? And Peek's going to just start dumping the thing into his backpack, the whole the whole drawer. <laughs> So those of you in the kitchen, which I believe is, I think just since you hear this is the sound of rattling metal back yeah. in the room. I come back out. What are you doing? We're making it look like a robbery, cousin. Okay. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> it's working. <laughs> um, are we going through the kitchen or no? No, let's, let's take out the door. Okay, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open it whichever direction it is and try to... This one peek. opens outwards from the room you're currently in. All right, is it a double door or is it a single door? This one's a double door. All right, so yeah, the, I'll uh, open the easier of the two doors and I'll try to... I'll just peek my head through. It's Not my whole body. Right now. Yeah. Peeking around, you see there's a dark, a dark hallway. All right. I have dark vision, so... Yeah, a dimly lit hallway. Uh, on your left-hand side, you can see um, a doorway with a door in it. And beyond that, a staircase leading upwards. On your right-hand side, you can see a set of double doors that appear to correspond to the front doors of the house. Okay, so like a parlor as in like the, the front door of the house oh. oh okay and across from you you can see two doorways so okay, one, door so on your, one door and the stairs on your left front door on your right two doors directly opposite you a very nice rug on the floor some paintings on the walls and a chandelier hanging from the ceiling all right so I come back into the dining area. So there is a door, stairs, door, door, front door. Do we want to go upstairs first or through the doors first? Let's check to see what the rooms are here. Yes, okay. no, no dilly dallying as well. We need to do yes. this fast. Let's, let's, All right. let's just open door, see if it's study. If not study, we keep going. Okay. So Rocky's I open the, the door. Door. Okay. I'm gonna open the door into that hallway wide so that everybody can go through. I'm going to the first door on the left. Okay, first on the left. Beyond that appears to be a scullery. So big, big, big sinks. Um, you think you can see around to, to where you were in the kitchen previously. All right, is this where I'm hearing the water running from? Make me a perception check. Nine. Can't hear any running water in this room. <laughs> Cousin, I don't hear any water in this room. Did you hear water before? I, I hear no water. In the kitchen, I heard water, but in here, I don't. 
Mm, maybe they have good piping. I don't know. That's weird. It is weird, but I don't see anything in here, really. It's a kitchen. Okay, let's keep Celery. going. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you come out of your door and look to the left, you'll probably see Racket at the next door just booting it in. Smash! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going for one of the next doors. Yep. Boon, is door in? not locked. It's an internal door in a house. Um, You see a, a rather nice sitting room, some she has long, some nice sofas, little low table set out, um, little piano in one corner, windows okay. overlooking the garden. Definitely okay. see somebody doing something evil in here. I'm going to start rummaging through any drawers I can find. <laughs> All right, Ash make me an investigation up. check to rummage. Rummaging. Make me a rummaging check. All right. And Asher's just going to look under the sofa because that's where he thinks it is. Okay. <laughs> So one of these have dropped some change down here. Ooh. Uh, that's just a so straight now up you have nine. Three silver pieces, Asher. Very nice. That'll come in handy for sure. A nine? Yeah. Straight up nine, yep. Rummaging round, you find you find uh, what appears to be a liquor cabinet. Lots of oh. very nice. Very that nice delays me for the it. remainder of the time. It doesn't matter what else I find. <laughs> yes. There's some very nice bottles in there. Oh yeah, I'm pocketing all of those bottles. I, I take a sip out of like every every third bottle. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh, that looks good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just keep doing that until my bag's full. It's good. Is, um, is Peek in that in that room with him? Where would you like to be? Did you follow? Yeah, yeah. Peek's Peek's gonna be following room? following them because that looks like it would have the most information. And when he sees the liquor cabinet, he's gonna. Find the most expensive bottle and and snag that. I probably don't even notice. So you just you just see likely a cat hand dart forward, grab a bottle, and dart backwards. <laughs> I'm just like mm -hmm. the proud owner of a bottle of fine. It's like holding. Uh, like, this is very good. Ferro light whiskey. Save this for celebration later. Uh, uh, are neither of you gonna share? Rock uh, oh yes, now. definitely. Not now. Okay. Um, later then. Yes, for celebration, when we find the, the thing we're looking for, which we don't know what it is yet. When we find it, right. All right. Uh, I am going to skip that room that those three went into <laughs> and go into sound. <laughs> I'm going into the other room. Uh, I'm going to look at Kanfaran and see if he's following or if he's staying back there. Uh, you look back at Kranfaran at the side door. And he's what you. I think you catch him as he's on a, at a side table and probably still like a ceramic bowl on like a side table and putting it in their pouch. So, ah. <laughs> you coming? Look outside. Can I do a quick perception to see if anyone's like outside or noticing or if it's yeah, clear outside. Make, make me a perception check to listen out for what's going on around as you come to this the last downstairs door. It's a uh, eleven. Can't hear anything going on outside really. Maybe yes, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Uh, with a with two quick, boom, boom, takes the door and poof, slams it behind them, uh, and goes over to uh, to sunset. Not really stuffing. I'm just walking normally. Okay. All right. So we're going into the last door yes, that last wasn't door. the front door. Yes. It appears to be uh, a parlor, which is a bit like a sitting room, but not quite. And. What is this room for? Do they just sit? Well, yes. And are there bookcases? There's some bookcases. There's a circle of chairs set out. There's a low, a low table. There's uh, flowers beautifully arranged in a vase. Okay, so this is just for sitting and conversation, maybe even reading. I'm gonna check out the mm -hmm. bookcase. All right, and see uh, what I can find there. Make me an investigation check, please. Please search Now that uh, Cranfern has kind of walked past the room, uh, Asher kind of skips into this parlor, uh, sees the flower, and, and takes a red one. Okay, you have one red flower. Why are y'all acting like the Grinch stealing Christmas? Like, just going <laughs> around, just... <laughs> Well, it's a robbery. You take valuable things. And the flower <laughs> no, but you said you skipped in. Rock is <laughs> drinking. Peak is like stealing shit. 
<laughs> Sunset, what did um, you roll? I rolled a 10. Okay, so searching over the, the title of these books, a lot of them appear to be uh, novels, romance novels in particular. Um, a few of them you see like um, a peerage of uh, the land there. You see some a few terms of history, but the majority of the shelf is taken up by romance novels. Um, uh, on the walls, is it just plain, or is there like paintings or anything? Well, there's paintings. Okay, and there's no, there's no other door outside of, out of the parlor. Uh, there's a, there's a small there is a small door, a connecting door that you would lead through into this into the sitting room. Okay. Um, do any of those romance novels have any interesting titles? You have to need to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna grab like three romance novels. Yeah, you find Gnomish Delight. Yes, Gnomish um, Delight. Uh, the Ballad of Lolandra. And uh, Halfling with a Fulling, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I take, I take, that one's particularly okay, spicy. Step aside, James, you're now in charge of any romance novel titling that needs to be done in this. All right, I've got three romance novels. All right, Indeed. and uh, nothing else on the shelves, so. Uh, Pe Peek's going to walk in and... and and see sunset with the books and be like, cousin, it's not time for reading. We're, we're trying to find information. What's wrong with you? For later. Cousin and her books. Does this and, place uh, have a cellar? It's probably back in the kitchen. Mm. I'm gonna go back to the kitchen. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Well, yeah, with boom, boom, boom. And just standing in the middle of this kitchen, just looking around. With like a drawer Gosh. missing, <laughs> like hastily put on. Yep. All right. It's probably empty on the floor. <laughs> so she's yeah. this kitchen. Um, make me. Uh, are you just looking, like just standing, just like staring around it, or are you um, like, searching around? They, uh, Sunset said they might. It might be in the kitchen, so probably just like searching around, just okay. standing in the kitchen, but just quickly right. looking for anything. Uh, make me the investigation check then. Great. I don't have a minus in that. That's... You're doing pretty good so far. Getting ones yeah. that you have just zero in. Um. Oh, great. Yeah. That. All right. It's a seven. Mm, doesn't appear to be any obvious entrance to a cellar. This the floor's pretty solid stone. Like maybe they don't have a cellar. <laughs> spit on the cellar floor. All right. Sit, spit on the the kitchen floor. Mm. Upstairs then. I'll walk towards this stairs okay i'm already i'm already at the stairs because i followed him out but i didn't go back into the kitchen because yeah. everybody said don't go in the kitchen so, so it seems there are seems to be two sets of stairs leading up to the upper floor so there's one that comes off the hall is the main set of stairs you've seen mm -hmm. there is there's a second narrower staircase leading up from the scullery are you taking the main stairs or the back stairs i'm taking the main stairs the peak's gonna follow her up, kind of trying to see what books she got. So he's like looking her shoulder as they're going up the stairs. Like anything good? Just some romance. Okay. Here, I pass. I pass the uh, dwarvish one to him. Okay. So heading oh, up the main looks... stairs, you f you find at the top of the stairs a corridor. With a window at each end and uh, four doors lead, five doors, always give your house a bathroom. Five doors leading off it. Mm. It's always the thing I forget in any plan of a house that I do for a game is like, there's no bathrooms. That's what an outhouse is for. Yeah, they're all outhouses, right? The world's your bathroom if you're strong enough. <laughs> <laughs> Anything's a bathroom, yep. Yo, where, does, but, where does the strength come into play, though? <laughs> if you have to ask, you're not strong yeah. enough. Yeah. All right. A corridor uh, with five drawers leading off it. Before I corridor... open any... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, is the corridor is the corridor straight ahead from the top of the stairs, or is this a lengthwise... It's, it's, like, uh, so you, go, you go up the stairs, and then you turn left, and round yeah. again, mm -hmm. and then the corridor is straight ahead. So you've sort of... Um, okay. Sort of Do a 180 almost. 180 turn. All right. Uh, when I get to the top of the stairs and make that corner, I want to listen 
to see if I can hear anyone. Uh, because it's been awfully quiet. Mm-hmm. They got to have some sort of employees still there. Make me a perception check. That's a 17 plus a three. So 20. It's very quiet. Doesn't sound like there's anyone in this house. Apart from all the people crashing around downstairs, stealing liquor. <laughs> And yep. God the knows nearest loud person is Raka. He's at the bottom of the stairs that you just went up. And when he walked up to the bottom of the stairs, he was going clink, 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 because he's just got a backpack full of bottles now. <laughs> cousin, cousin, I don't hear anybody. There's no one here that I can hear. Maybe they, they put too much trust in their wizards. But we haven't seen any magic or, or spells either. Except for the dog. Yes. Dogs. Dogs. We should be, maybe then not trying to protect this house. The top part. Maybe there's a part we're not seeing here. Like an attic? Like a hidden room or a f- floor or s- something? Or a secret house. The or- basement? House within a house. Two That's... Houses. <clears throat> oh, I've I've seen it before. It's uh, quite magnificent. Let's let's keep checking this top floor, and then right. we look um, for secret rooms later. Okay, mm. I'm going into the very first door that's on my left. Okay. I guess the very first door on your left is a little smaller and plainer than the rest of the doors, and it leads you through into this small bit of corridor that sort of bends around into. A small bedroom. Um, okay. With a, with a door on the far side of it. And there is a, a single... There are... Sorry, question. There are two single beds. Uh, each with, like, a chest at the foot of them. And both beds are made. And the everything in this room seems quite dusty. Okay. Um, first side. Um, all right. No, I am going. You said there's two chests, but it's dusty. Two chests, does, two beds, and one door on the far side of the room. It mm. does it. And one like small window. Dust? Does it look like the dust in the floor has been disturbed at all recently? Ooh, make me either investigation or or survival for tracking ability, depending on what you would like to use. I'll do uh, investigation. That's an 18 plus 2. 20. No mm. one has been in here for a long time. Like, this dust has lain here for months. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Uh, do the chests My house. Look like they're locked? Mm. Or they, they have locks on them. But as in, like, they, they have, like, a keyhole, but... Uh, I'm going to test them to see if they open. But they're not locked. Okay. And are they empty? No. Inside, you can see a small sack of it appears to be some folded clothes. Um, the first one, a, a little book, a little, a little wooden box, a pair of shoes. Do they look like... What kind of clothing? Children's clothing? Uh, server's clothing? Clothing, but very very plain looking, very practical. Very much workaday sort of wear. All right. There's nothing in here. I'm going to try the other door. I'm going to test the other door, see if it opens, if it unlocks. It opens, and you can see a staircase leading down. I'm going to follow clunk, the clunk, 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 clunk. Sorry, what was that? I was coming up the stairs. <laughs> follow the staircase down and you find yourself back down in the scullery. This is the, the back staircase. All right. Round and round. I'm going to go through the scullery. I'm going to go out into the hallway and go up the other stairs again. And I'm going to try to scare Raka since he was the last one up the stairs. All right. Make me a stealth check. My passive uh, perception is 10, so this shouldn't be very hard. (laughs) 
15, uh, if you include my stuff. Raka, you do not hear her coming. Nope. Where'd you go? <laughs> I grab his shoulders and hiss at the same time. Blah! I probably drop the bag. <laughs> Crash! <laughs> a few of the things. <laughs> 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 Uh, I don't hurt you, but I turn around ready to, like, punch you <laughs> with my with the hand that's not holding There is axe. a small uh, produce flame uh, bolt that comes flying over Raka's head. I, I duck. Oh, my God. P- Peek's gonna just poke his head out of one of the rooms that he's, he was searching and just look at everyone real, like, angry. And be like, shh! And then he's gonna go back inside. Professionals. <sighs> sirens outside like (laughs) the cops are waiting they have snipers on us we don't know how but they have snipers trained on us long crossbows um i guess i guess uh cran will head towards the room peak was in yeah peaks peaks checking the rooms on the other side of the hall that sunset was was in okay so across the other side of the hall you open the door and the first room you enter Appears to be a bedroom with everything sort of draped in dust sheets. There's sort of white sheets <laughs> draping like a four poster bed, <laughs> furniture, just all shapes shrouded in these white dust sheets. Okay. Villa, uh, as you open the door and the breeze disturbs them. And dust. Uh, Pickle, Pickle kind of like lift it up real quick just to get a good idea of what's under everything. And, um, <laughs> Below yeah. dust is <laughs> do, do, do you want me to cl- clear the air, Confirm? No, I'll um, I'll step out with with two quick <laughs> step into the hallway. Okay. Your nose is gray with dust. Yeah. Yeah. I I picked up uh, Raka's bag and handed it back to him. Just uh, dripping out of the bottle or out of the bottom of the bag and probably <laughs> down the stairs. Waste good Flammable life. alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> By the way. Oh yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm just making a note of all the damages for the bill. <laughs> all right. Bill. So what? What was in the? What was in the room? Like what was the room under all the white sheets? Oh, and in, under the sheets, there is mm-hmm. there's like um, a dressing table, a bed. Um, a chest of drawers and a wardrobe. Okay. There's also two windows looking out over the gardens. Okay. okay. Uh, people, people, just like take a quick like inventory and you know note the dust and just go back into the hallway. Um, yeah. Well, um, if you were hiding something, maybe you would put it in a room that no one would think you would use. What What kind of room are you thinking? The one you just left. Right? The, you no, there under sheets. Did you look inside? Yes, no one's been in there. It's very dusty, very dirty. No one's been in there a long time. Cousin, where where did you hear the the water? In water. The we should in the we should uh, we should check the kitchen again. But like, uh, what about every these three crack? Doors? What about <clears throat> these three doors? I will check. I'll walk over to the next one and just uh, <laughs> bathroom. Nice to see raised claw Like, sat in the middle of the floor. Uh, if they can't see within, can feel them go, go, go. And someone's left a tap on. No. <laughs> uh, this one, it's best if you stay behind. I'll walk in and close the door. <laughs> <laughs> this is a vandalism of a different kind. <laughs> <laughs> you go too far. What <laughs> Listen, we, we met her and then the job started. I thought we would have a little bit of time. Listen, there's no need to destroy this poor woman's house, okay? <laughs> okay. So, so what's the bathroom? This is the bathroom. <laughs> I go into the one that was across from the little room that I went into. That one's the dust sheet room. Oh, well, then the one next to it. Yeah, the one next to it? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You see, a rather nice bedroom. All done up in um, red and gold, like four poster bed in the center of the room, with a large double wardrobe on one side of the room, a second large wardrobe on the other side of the room, a, a dressing table laid out with various pots of like 
very I forgot, I still, I forgot makeup what, that's the word I'm after cosmetics cosmetics that's the one I was like yeah various cosmetics laid out in pots um like a jewelry case open um it looks a bit more untidy like someone's recently been sort of shuffling stuff around oh okay uh I am going to open up the wardrobes both of them okay the uh, first Asher will peek in and oh this is a, a wonderful color scheme and walk in and uh he'll join in the searching of things okay so the first wardrobe you open up you can see lines of dresses hanging up sort of neatly very lots of different colors leaning quite heavily on the reds and the golds okay uh second wardrobe is locked just to be clear this room is not dusty right no not no, dusty. okay uh i'm i'm going to knock on the reach through the dresses and knock on the back wall of the first wardrobe I opened up to see if there's a space behind it. Make me a perception check. Or investigation, I guess. Perception to hear the knock, investigation to investigate. Up 12. 12. Seems solid. All right, but the other one's locked. Uh, as uh, Sunset was knocking on the back, Asher kind of looks up and peers at the clothes uh, and takes uh, what's probably a nightgown and uh, what he thinks is a robe and kind of like picks it up. Um, Sunset, do you think this would look nice on me? <laughs> I glance at him, look him up and down and and uh, the colors against his skin tone. The colors Insight look check. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> the colors look nice. That's, that's nice. I think I'll take this one. Just hold it over his hand and walk away. Clothing. Well, they're well. They're in that room. Peek's gonna have gone back downstairs to check out the kitchen, like listening for the water sound that Sunset was talking about. Okay, mm. make a perception check. Twenty-one. You can hear there is the sound of water coming from somewhere beneath the ground. Definite sound of flowing water. Okay, Peek's gonna like really like investigate this room thoroughly while they're all doing their shenanigans upstairs. All right, make an investigation check. Uh, shenanigans for Cran. Oh man, shenanigans I'm... and shenanigans upstairs. I'm rolling very good. Uh, with my investigation. Oh boy. Okay, nineteen. Oof. You're doing a thorough, thorough search of this kitchen. There is no cellar entrance. Mm. You do find mm. where they keep all the knives. Where they keep. You find a second like rack of wine bottles at the back of one of the cupboards. Oh, good. Thank I take you. the nicest one again. <laughs> yeah. uh, Cranfairn exits the toilet. Oh, God. D no, this closes it as soon awful. as possible. Just <laughs> <laughs> if anyone goes in there, I'll describe what it looks like, but otherwise I'll have it closed. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Um, we don't want to get banned. <laughs> All right, so I am going to actually check out the lock that's on the second wardrobe and see if there is anything that I can use to maybe pick the lock. I'm going to check. Actually, I'm going to check to see if there's a key to the wardrobe in the jewelry box. Okay. Uh, maybe investigation checks through the route through the jewelry box and everything. That's a 14 plus 2, 16. You do not find a key. You do find some uh, some hairpins. All right. Um, okay. and you and you find some some rather nice jewelry. Um, yeah. And when you flip it over, one of them says Tilbor on the back. <laughs> There's some, some lovely rubies. All right. Uh, is is Tilbor in the room with us? With is Raka <laughs> with us in this room? No, I think I'm still at the top of the stairs. I'm taking out all the broken bottles <laughs> and keeping the, the keeping the not broken ones in the bag. All right, uh, you've got three I, unbroken bottles. Oh, uh, okay. I think I'm just going to leave the unbroken bottles in the bag at the top of the stairs. I don't have any belongings in it anyway, so. <laughs> all right. Um, um, Cran exiting is going to walk up to Rocket and say, move, dwarf. And without what? waiting, just move, like walk down the stairs, um, mm -hmm. head towards that back, that side entrance and then walk out, um, maybe looking back at Peek and saying, need fresh air, and exit out, and then close the door behind them. Okay, so you're outside the house now. That's yeah. it, outside the house. Yeah, I'm outside now. 
<laughs> Peek is in the kitchen still. Peek is in the kitchen. Rack is at the top of the stairs. Oh, Asher, what is that smell? Asher... I go downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Racker is also downstairs in the hallway, and Asha and Sunset are in the the bedroom. Yes, uh, I take the hairpins. I, I disregard the jewelry. I take the hairpins and I go and try to pick the lock on the wardrobe. Okay. Are you proficient in? I'm proficient in thieves' tools. Okay. In which case, roll dexterity with your proficiency. He's a good hair. As it turns out, all along that thieves' tools was just hairpins. That's all it was. <laughs> ever. Good hair pins. It's just a really nice yeah. case. It's all about the marketing, really. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled a natural twenty. Hey. Nine. Nine. <laughs> plus plus five, and then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're making up for my ones. <laughs> The lock on the wardrobe is no longer locked. It's All right. disintegrated. I open it. You open it. There's no clothes in this wardrobe. Or any shelves. Instead, there is just a staircase. A narrow, dark staircase leading downwards. Oh, I hate it. Ooh. Asher! What and the way? smell of damp coming I up. I see it, I see it. Do I smell just the smell of damp? Is it kind of musty? Like and the smell of sort of cold, like a smell of cold sort of water that's lain still, perhaps. Just I'm stagnant. Stagnant. Yes, yeah, stagnant. That's the word. The word. All right. Uh, Asher will produce flame and uh, put it in his left hand and then uh, put it over to Sunset. Here, uh, take this. Just a ball of fire. Uh. What? I, I look at my my hands, which have fur peeking out on the fingers and a fur half, and then the wraps around. Thank you, but no. You suit yourself. Um, all right, look, we could tell everyone else, or we could go by ourselves, find everything, and come back as heroes. It smells like stagnant water. And? I don't want to do water alone. Suit yourself. I'll go. Uh, and Asher starts walking down the staircase. Uh, Asher starts walking down the staircase into this, into the. <laughs> We're so split. Um, so so <laughs> Peek, Peek, Peek would have followed Cranfuren like out the door too. So Peek is outside with Cranfuren. Peek's kind of like looking at the outside of the house, looking for like a cellar entrance or something. Okay. Yeah, Cranfuren's Cranf Cranf like moving some foliage if there are, if there is any. Right, make, make an investigation check. Whichever you're taking the lead on it can have advantage for any help value. Um, I'll I'll aid Peak. I got a net twenty. Go ahead and roll with advantage, just 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 because I'm aiding you. <laughs> you might get an... <laughs> double net twenty. <laughs> no, it's not. It, it was, I'll stick with the first roll. What was the second one? Just out of nine. The second one was a nine. That's me just, helping. Despite Cranfuren's <laughs> help. Do a thorough search of the bushes and you find no cellar entrances. Okay. Right. Move I move around to I'll be moving around to the back side of the house too. Okay. Right. Because we're still on the side, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so searching yeah. searching around. So I'll, yeah, I'll be I'll be at the back side, like looking for an entrance back there. So. I say so Cranfair and Peek are outside. Mm -hmm. Racker, you you were downstairs in the house. Yep, I'm at the bottom of the stairs now. At the bottom of the stairs. Trying to avoid the smell. <laughs> Uh, Asher, you're you. descending this dark stair staircase. I'm just looking back and forth. I go light source and you dark vision, so you're fine. I go from from inside the room to the top of the stairs and saying, "Hey, we found <gasps> stairs, and it smells funny. Let's go." You found stairs. Uh, I'll yes. get the others. Go ahead. All right, and then I go back and go and down. follow down the stairs. Where did they go? Hmm, eeny, okay. meeny, miny. <laughs> I just go in a random direction and hopefully I go to the right correct door. <laughs> Roll me a D4. Sure. Uh, D4s don't show up on the camera properly because they're angled weirdly, so I got a four. Okay. You head off through the scurry, open a door, and you can see Peek and Crenfer and rummaging around oh. in bushes. <laughs> Yeah, I think you, you, you catch them talking. Cranfern is looking at Peek, saying, Do you um have a family or is it just you and Sunset? Uh we're not now. 
Like not now you don't have a family or not now you don't want to talk about it? It's not It's not the time to talk about family. We're looking for important things, for money. Right. Family not important. So late, later. Okay. Yeah, sure. And then he just goes back to it. <laughs> <laughs> family is not important. Yeah, I just... I I, this I'll, I'll bust out the, uh, the door, basically. I just open it really quickly. Uh, <clears throat> guys, uh, we found some secret stairs. Mm. I found you a wine bottle. And uh, he's going to give God. him the, the nice bottle he just found in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Come quickly, bring it with you, and I'll run up the stairs. Oh, uh, just do yourself a favor. Like, cover your face when you go up. <laughs> what? What happened? Grand Fran's walking in. <laughs> Uh, leading the way up, up these stairs. <laughs> Actually, you're still like, on a very I long staircase. <laughs> he, Peak will be covering his nose, but like out of curiosity, once they get to the top, he kind of like... Constitution oh! saves. <laughs> 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 it's terrible. I think it's about the power level of the stinking cloud spell, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, do I need to kill you all? <laughs> I think you're already trying to do that. That'll happen um, momentarily. I don't need to try you killing yourselves. <laughs> um, I guess since, since that's outside of that door, so no, I'm I'm, I'm inside the inside. Yeah. The oh yeah, you're already inside. Asher down the down the very very long staircase. Okay. Now they said they um, found a secret door somewhere, so look around for something unusual. And I just kept looking in the doorways. Oh. I've left the, the wardrobe <laughs> open. <laughs> okay. Fancy bedroom with an open wardrobe. Uh, I think it's here? <laughs> cousin! Cousin, cousin, cousin. Where are you, cousin? Cousin, cousin, cousin. <laughs> I am here! Here, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How deep is this staircase? <laughs> <laughs> so well, I should be walking down it for like three years at this point. So. <laughs> uh, how big is the staircase? I need to know. Oh yeah, yeah. How how like big is it? <laughs> is correct. Just big enough to squeeze a minotaur in. Okay. All right. no. Well, I, I count as medium size. So if they can fit seven feet in, I'm good. You probably you have to have turn your head. head. You have to turn your head sideways so your horns about, don't scrape the walls. Only about you know five. Oh, they're metal. They're metal tips. So if they're scraping the walls and it's like sparking <laughs> metal on top. You need long scratch marks down. Yeah. Um. You go first. I'll follow. <laughs> but yes, as Asher reaches the foot of the staircase, and as the others follow behind, if if the the, the OBS gods are listening, we're gonna go on a break <gasps> and pick up. Break. Yes, a break. <laughs> Yay. People. Oh. And we're back. All right. So, in the first part of this night's adventure, our five heroes were hired to sneak into the house belonging to uh, one Yolanda Bright and find evidence of her wrongdoing and nefarious activities for her in order to aid her rival at court. In, su in supreme Dungeons & Dragons stealthy manner. They, a minotaur galloped through her front gate, they walked in through the front door, stole her silverware, stole her liquor, broke half her liquor. <laughs> that was the worst part of all of it. Rubbing trans into the bushes. <laughs> but somehow, despite all that, managed to find the entrance to a secret staircase hidden in the wardrobe of the master bedroom and it descended down into the darkness beneath the house. With um, the druid Asher Veltras taking the lead and the others trailing to varying extents behind. So just for my own benefit here, we have Asher in the lead, followed by Sunset. And then Rack is probably at the top of the stairs running, running in first because he was just there first. Mm -hmm. And Grand Fran said they'd go last. Raka, Peak, and Cranfarin. 
picking up the lead, horns dragging across the stone surface as he squeezes his way down the staircase. How concerned are you about your cousin, Peek? Uh, she, might, she might be dead. <clears throat> also, you said family doesn't matter, so... Except, except for the cousin. All right. Only cousin matters. Asher. Because of his family. Yes. Ash, you reach the base of this staircase. It feels like you've been walking down it for hours. Just round and round and round. The light of your um, flame reflecting off dark stone walls. Getting darker and damper as they descend. But now the stairway opens out and you can see a room ahead of you. Um, a vaulted ceiling about um, 10 feet high. The room's about 15 feet wide and it extends sort of about 30 feet ahead of you. In the centre of the room, you can see a long, low table on which is laid out um, what appears to be a range of alchemical apparatus in a way. You've got bottles and distillate distillation apparatus hung like clamps. There's a steady drip, drip, drip of some green, luminous green liquid from um, distillation tube into like a round bottom flask held by the clamp. On the left side of the room, you can see a glass fronted cabinet with various bottles and items in it. Um, directly ahead of you, you can see a wall with a bookcase. And on the right hand side, there's an opening in the wall that fill, takes about half the length of the wall and beyond which you can see dark water. The surface just rippling occasionally. I the see. shadows <clears throat> cling a little harder to that side of the room. And behind right, you on the surface, uh, you can see the soft pad, pad of sunset following okay. you behind. Priorities before anyone gets down here. Is there a candle? Uh, there are candles, yes. There's candles. Right, I'm going to swipe one of those. Uh, use control flames to uh, douse it and just pack it away. Okay. Uh, and then he'll start looking over the alchemical equipment, see what he can make of it. Um, he, he's a druid, so he doesn't have a ton of experience in this, but maybe some plants that were, you know, mashed down or uh, extracted from. All right. Make me, make me a nature check in that case, if that is what you are seeking to know. Uh, solid five. You recognize the plants. You don't really recall them having any particular uses in terms of alchemy or particularly medicinal things like, like there's some, there's some rose petals, a bit, of, a bit of lavender, all seeping in like this bottle. All right, rose petals is good, so I'll take that too. Um. And then uh, Asher will look over to the staircase as sunset comes down. Ah, welcome. Uh, if there's anything to be found, it's certain to be here. Muted. <laughs> I think there's a reason. <laughs> not, not quite yet. Uh, I will be going on mute and have to do that in a moment. Um, I'm going to look around. And I'm going to see the bookcase, and I'm going to make a beeline to the bookcase, and I'm going to check out the books that are on there. Um, make me an investigation check, please. We're going for the most used skill of the evening. More romance novels. More romance novels. <laughs> 14. 14. It's a spell of create romance novel. No, romance novels. That's how she's doing it. But as you scan over the... the the shelf you can see there are various tomes of herbology and alchemy and magical practice and it's just a scan along the titles you get to one book that looks a little odd i'm gonna grab that one i'm gonna put one of the romance novels back i'm gonna grab that one and i'm gonna look it over well, you you grab for this book, but you realize what as you grab for it, what was odd about it is this book. It's, it's not a book; it's part of the shelf. Ah, carved upwards, and you hear a clunk clunk as you grab it. Oh, sounds of and 
part of the bookcase just swings aside and swings inwards. And you can see a car dark corridor leading further. All right. Can I see into the corridor at all? Yes, you can. You can see a corridor extends about 10 feet ahead and opens out into a round room with a fountain in its center. You can see this sound of running water. Aha, I found the running water. And in the center of the room is a, there's a statue of a woman holding aloft this like vase of water just pouring down over her constantly. Asher, I think this is the water I was hearing. Uh, that, that serves to be true. Uh, Asher will peek in. Uh, is that the same statue as outside? No, no, the one outside is regarding that urn. Mm -hmm. This one's holding the urn above their head. Very Asher. different urn stances. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, no, not, not, they're not related. <laughs> before before I decide to go oh, in yeah. here, I'm going actually back to the staircase and I'm going to shout up saying, hey, are you guys in there? So at this point, Raki, you're reaching sort of to the bottom of this staircase. Yep. As you can I think probably that. halfway up, actually, I would have turned to Peek and said, listen, I'm just slowing you down and moved out of the way. And he probably beat me down significantly if he wasn't impeded by me being in the way. <laughs> so I press against the wall and let him go past. All right. Yeah, Peek's, Peek's going to try to skip down the stairs, get to the bottom first. <clears throat> Right. Cousin, what did you find, cousin? Oh, we found um, all of this and a secret door behind the bookshelf opening into a room with a fountain. Oh, well done, cousin. This is exactly what we were looking for. I did think we so. find any papers or anything? Not any yet. Documents? The, the bookcase had books on magic and alchemy and other stuff any more dorven romance books i was looking at that other one earlier it was very interesting research um lots of pictures no many no. pictures no, i will never look so at raka the same <laughs> all right uh no it was mostly reference books type oh, okay magic. Uh, Peek's gonna walk over to where all that alchemical stuff is and just kind of like look at it and he's he's not even gonna investigate because he doesn't know anything about alchemical stuff he's just gonna like touch things as if he knows what he's doing like he's just gonna ah oh, yes oh just gonna okay, poke stuff. okay he's right he's poking so, at like, the different uh, bottles some of it's, hot, stuff. Some of it's boiling there's some like <laughs> there's the whole table of alchemical stuff and there's this glass fronted case of various bottles and ingredients yeah and, and he's gonna turn around and be like this is very interesting stuff alchemical equipment yeah uh i i peek back up into the stairs to see if i can hear see how far away the other guys i don't want to go in that room alone you just hear <laughs> yeah you've reached the bottom of the staircase then i will move out of the way so this this bottom floor, how high is the ceiling? Am I still kind of crouched on? It's fifteen foot in the center. Gets a bit lower at either side. Okay. So you're able to stand up. All right. Oh. And it gets the ceiling's lower in the bit over the dark water on the right hand side. What is this place? Uh, it's a research lab or or something. There's lots of alchemical equipment here. And what? lots of books. For lots it. of books. Am I um, severely unimpressed with the stonework in this room? Maybe a stone cutting check. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Cran will start heading over to the al alchemical stuff. All right. Um, be be careful. Delicate. It's delicate. You're delicate. As Cran is looking um, over. It's, Some of the stuff. it's actually quite nice stonework. This is a well. This is well made. It's well, at least as well made as the house above. Perhaps better. Mm. We put a lot of work into this. It smells bad, but uh, looks good. Solid. 
-hmm. heard that before. I'm, I'm continuing to look around. I'm looking for a notebook or something, maybe a diary. All right. Maybe, maybe investigation check as you're searching around, searching around this, this room. You're all, you're all down in this room now. 13. Um, 13. You find various sort of notebooks with alchemical sort of scribblings and formula scribbled in them. No sign of anything that appears to be a diary. All right. I, I take the, uh, I take the notes. Um, looking over this alchemical stuff, is it possible for Cran to figure out what it might be for? What its purpose? What it's what it's gonna? Oh, what's the byproduct of it? Make me. Uh, unless you've got any skill in alchemy, I guess make me either. Like, um, investigation. Or nature. If, if, mm. if those helps. I've got a plus one in investigation, but I think what I'm looking for is more for nature. So I'll roll nature. It's it's which minus one, one. What, what you think you like what do you think you're trying to find here? I'll do that minus one nature just to figure out if we can get it's any like more minus numbers, don't you? Uh, that's a ten. <laughs> um it smells nice. It's just got lots of nice flowers, but it doesn't it doesn't quite smell like perfume or anything. It's like it's this sort of this large glass urn and sort of flower petals seeping in it and then this distillation mm. going across this various liquids and engines and this strange like soft pink liquid mm. found the potpourri as a uh, crane steps back and uh i guess i'll just look over there's only one in entrance like or there's only one exit out besides the stairs yeah there is the entrance to the the found the statue room that sunset found mm -hmm. and then there's the, the the pool of dark Looming water. Great. Um, walk over to that pool of water. If anyone else is over there, I'm yeah, staying away from that it. pool. Uh, Asher's near. It kind of has the flame, kind of looking down, trying to see. Maybe uh, a perception the check. Whoever's looking down into the water. Yeah, Cran will head over and help. I just not helping, but just walking over to Asher. You don't Asher. get advantage. Yeah, I got a natural one, so you better roll something good. <laughs> oh, I was not going to. Water. Nothing to um, see. Do you, do you see anything? <laughs> Um, it's Me very don't. dark water. Do you want to drink some? I'm and it's at that point, Asha. Yes. This 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 arm, this long oh, no. arm, just reaches up out of the surface of the water, straight towards you. Uh, that is a fourteen to hit. Will that hit? Fourteen does not hit. Uh, quick reaction, the shield comes out and he jumps out of the way. <laughs> the arm sinks back down into the water and I'd like you <clears throat> all in this split second instant to roll me your initiative. Surely I can't roll a one again, right, chat? <laughs> <laughs> Just dark water, huh? 22. 15. Oh my god. That's not 22 bad. for sunset? Yes. 20 for Raka. 20 for Raka? Peak. Nice. 15 for peak. 15 for peak. Cranfaron? 10. 10. And Asha? Uh, 15 for me as well, but I'll say 14 to go after peak. Yeah, whichever you want to go first can go first and decide it. <clears throat> so 15 peak, then Asha. And. Ooh, go there. Okay. Sunset. You see this arm lunge out of the water towards Asher, miss and sink back down beneath the surface of the dark water. What would you like to do? Um, I am going to back up against the wall. All right. You back up against the far wall from this pool? Yeah, far, as far away from the pool as I possibly can. Uh, I am going to pull out my darts, though. Uh, but I'm not going to use anything yet and because I it went back into the water, so there's nothing I can do yet. Okay. All right. Uh, Asher and Cranfer, and the other ones up, up by the water, right? That is correct. Okay. So. Be gentle. <laughs> yeah, don't hurt oh, the giant minotaur creature. <laughs> in the water again and strikes for Asher. Uh, that is a 15. Uh, once again, the shield comes up just barely being able to deflect it. 
And the second one strikes towards Cranfern. And that is a 17. That hits. Okay. So this, as this arm lunges up out the water, you take uh, five points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> okay. And you feel this arm grapple onto you. <laughs> Look, like, uh oh. Wrapping its way bonelessly around you. Ew, you, you didn't say it was a tentacle, you said arm, Tiz! <laughs> oh, no. no, and it's not good at any bones! Oh, it's, gross. it's an arm oh. in the water. Why wouldn't it be a tentacle? Uh, 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 gross. Of such a suckeriness. And that is your additional uh, three points of piercing damage as he's like just dart into your skin. What? Three points? Yes, three points of piercing damage. And Raka, it's your turn. What would you like to do about the situation? Well, I'm certainly glad that I can see my enemy and I will run up uh, as close as I can to this this creature's uh, tentacle that's grabbing my friend the Minotaur and I'll swing down attempting to uh, sever it from its grip. Okay, roll so, an attack. All right. Uh, that's a 16. 16? That will hit it. Oh, great. Uh, so I will do a uh, Battlemaster dice roll with this as well. Uh, so this does four slashing damage, and I guess seven slashing dam seven seven as well. So eleven total slashing damage, okay. and uh, he has to make. Let me just bring it up here one moment. Uh, uh I'll use a maneuvering attack on this thing. So basically, uh, uh I'll say. Peek, get over here, and I'll I'll yell to Peek. Are you right next to it, Peek? No, you're not. Are you? Uh, Peek was still over at the alchemical equipment with Cran. This room's right. not very big. It's only it's only like thirty feet by fifteen feet. So this allows you to move your um your movement speed as or sorry half of your movement speed as a reaction. So you can just move if you want to. Oh, during this turn. Right now. Yep. Using your uh, reaction. Uses your reaction, so you wouldn't be able to like. I wouldn't be able to attack or anything. You wouldn't be able to attack an opportunity with somebody. Uh, Peek's just gonna stay where he is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Get over here. Peek. Help us out. <laughs> Peek's like, Peek's like pointing at the the bite mark that he got earlier. He's like, eh, eh. <laughs> I was hoping that I had the disarm maneuver, but I don't well, yet. <laughs> oh, that would have been perfect. Well, that, uh -huh. I'm gonna say with 11 points of damage, for the point of view of this this. Um, tentacle. It is effectively disarmed in that you have severed off. It's still wrapped around Cranfern, but it's not attached to the rest of it. It's just kind of switching and flailing a little, like yeah, just my axe hits the like, hits the you know, stonework. You, like, like worm. So. <laughs> Start trying to get it off me. And Peek, it's your turn. Uh, Peek's gonna use his short bow and just try to shoot the remaining tentacle from where he's at. All right. Uh, is it is it out of the water or is it in the water? The the other tentacle because I know the other one had him grappled, but the other just, the, in the process of it's just kind of like making its way back down into the water. Okay, I'll still yeah, I'll t I'll take a shot at it. All right, it's trying to like maybe a short bow in this. Uh, nat twenty. All right. We're off and um, that counts as getting over here. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh can i do i get a sneak attack since the, they're right next to it yes you do okay so 1d6 plus four that's six points of damage and another seven and what what do i get uh for the nat 20 like you've is got, it another dice again an, like the same thing or just the attack just the attack roll all of them. All of it. Rogues are crazy. Bad hands and you Wait, I get the whole dance. thing. All dice you just roll and, and roll them yep. again. Okay, okay. Rogue crits. Rogue crits are brutal. That's another. That's another five damage, and another six damage. 
okay, so this, all this flailing, these tentacles going on, this crossbow just strikes down into it, and you just see this. <laughs> As the tentacles just drop down into the water, before even Asher and Cranfern have a chance to react to this situation, they are saved by their friends. He almost got you, Cranfern. But now we're back out of position. We're no longer. I almost got Peek's, it. Peek's I... gonna like sneak over to the water and just kind of poke the tentacle if it's floating, and just make sure it's dead. He's just kind of like poking it. Maybe a medicine check. Okay. Because I'm aiming to try and get all these checks done. But how are we going to fit them? I'm handling it. As a cramp uh, for the tentacle aside, uh, Asher's going to create dead. bonfire and uh, just disintegrate that remaining tentacle. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, not tossing it aside. Oh, you're putting it over your shoulder. Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to untangle it away from him. All right, I will all not right. create a bonfire on your face. <laughs> Thank you, oh Lord. <laughs> Merciful God. Pickle, Pickle just let everyone know that it's dead. Real, real confident. Good. <laughs> like he turns uh, around, he puts his his arms on his hips, and he's like, "It's dead." Uh, Great. And uh, you're gonna keep that crown cr- friend. Um, actually, just do you recognize it? I'm gonna hold it over, hold over this tentacle thing to Asher, um, to see if either of us recognize what sort of creature this is. Uh, yeah, I, it's sea based. I don't. Pull, pull the tentacle out of the water. You're trying to pull to so the tentacle that's not attached to the body or the tentacle that's it's a 14 for my nature check. Yeah, six over here. I don't I don't do water things. Uh, it's have you spent much time underground in caves full of dark horrible things and water conferring? Um, um honestly probably not a lot. Um, but they've they've heard they've probably heard some stories of like monsters in the dark from from their original tales. tribe, but not they don't have they don't see it and spend so oh, much time down there. Things that live down in dark places and snatch people out of the darkness and ooze their way through cracks and lurk to pounce on unsuspecting travelers. But this thing doesn't quite match up one hundred percent with any stories you've heard. It's Mm, okay. Whatever it is, it's horrible and dead. Mm. Su- surprisingly, Raka would have spent a lot of time underground searching for gems and such as he was uh, being mentored for his position. What uh, Would I have discovered something similar to this? Mm. Be in the mountain tunnels and stuff. Maybe a nature check. Sure. Let's give it a shot. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> you don't know what it is. <laughs> Just waiting for the... Yeah, exactly. Oh, Roll natural one and it comes to life. Uh, <laughs> 14. <laughs> I don't have any pluses. Uh, it, again, doesn't match up 100% with any stories you've heard. The closest it matches up with is with things called chokers that lunge out of the darkness and are known for having a habit of snatching people up and eating them, basically. And also for their called chokers weird, like, or something. Weird, Bonelessness. Boneless chalkers. A chalkos, I think they're called. Okay, let's get away from the water. Um, do you want to, do you want to see its body? Is the other tentacle attached? Uh, the other one's still attached to the body, yes. Can I try to grab it and it'll pull it out of the water? Make me a strength check. Just a standard strength check? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Pickle, Pickle, help him out because he's pretty confident that the thing's dead. So Pickle, grab, okay, cool. grab onto yeah, a tentacle. With advantage then. Okay, right, cool. So that's a um, one roll. So that's a third, and then with advantage. Okay, so total is twenty, dirty twenty. You haul out the body. It's, it's almost humanoid looking with these. Can I grab it and just <laughs> just like slingshot it yeah. onto so the it's ground? A humanoid body with this greenish dapple skin. These two legs with. Um, webbed feet and these uh, arms slash tentacles. This is like mm. suckers on the end. Well, thanks for the help. Arm, tentacle, the other ones. It's a shame we had to kill something so beautiful. It's no, it's not. Indeed, isn't it? it? Tried to kill us. What's wrong with you? 
Well, I'm just saying it's it's um I mean it's nice to look at. <laughs> Wait, did you guys hear that? I turn around. <laughs> you see a woman standing in the entrance way where to the staircase that you descended down. Oh, um, hello. This is a, a youngish woman with uh, fair hair pulled back into a very elaborate bun. Uh-oh. Wearing, a, wearing any red. She's wearing a red silk gown. There's a rather like elaborate choker had, right? of golden garnet. <laughs> it's hair. the exact same one as her <laughs> <laughs> And she's just looking looking around at all of you. She goes, I suppose it's pointless to inquire as to why you're all in my house. Um, well, we come bearing it's gifts and stories and wonderful like things. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna try and finish casting Charm Person. Okay. Maybe uh, I just distract her by yelling. Pe- <laughs> Peek's gonna stand forward and, and say, we saw a robbery at your house, so we came to investigate. We tried to find them, but they're they're not here, and then we were attacked by a giant tentacle um, creature what's, what's, here. What's your DC? Wisdom save of 12 only. She does not look very charmed by your uh, charming magic. What he said. Sorry, I missed what he said. Could you? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Repeat it, please. Yes, uh, we were uh, across the street, uh, eating street food, and we saw a robbery. Big, big man uh, had no horns. Uh, broke gate down. And ran inside, smashed everything. We t- so we're looking, we're trying to find him. And we came down here and got attacked by a tentacle thing. And we cannot find the big man now. But uh, he did horrible things to your bathroom upstairs. <laughs> Roll me a deception check at disadvantage. Okay. Oh, that's all, all right. true. <laughs> he broke all your liquor. <laughs> you are okay, so- okay, this might not be that bad. Uh, let me see. Deception. Oh, plus six. Seventeen. That is <laughs> why you're in my house. Why you are down here, having killed oh. my pet. Your pet. Your pet is a murdering, crazy tentacle creature. We thought, we thought maybe the big man came downstairs here because we couldn't find him in the rest of the house and we wanted to bring him to justice for you, fair lady. Hmm. Well, and she sort of leans forwards a little and looks towards you. Let's see. I was just checking her character stats. <laughs> no, no, she is... Uh, Double checking how certain spell works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, character stats. Probably should <laughs> check how that spell works. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Forget exactly how this one works. Racket is just sweating <laughs> in the middle of the room. <laughs> He's trying to hide the wine stains that he got on his, his shirt. <laughs> Smells of every alcohol. You feel, you feel this brushing against your mind. Maybe a wisdom saving throw, please. Who, Peak? Yes, Peak. Oh, no. Yeah, this is not good. Uh, Wisdom saving throw. I am not wise at all. 11? You feel as sort of flashes as the last like hour or so sort of dart through your mind. You see you see Lady Yolanda, you see you you breaking into the house, you see so as you feel some sort of like rummaging and sorting through your thoughts. <laughs> and then she just good. leans back. Does, does my cousin look like he's in pain? He's just kind of like, uh, like his eyes are twitching and stuff. <sighs> well, thieves and liars, I see. We're, we're very sorry, my lady. You can have the silver water back. I don't want it anymore. I don't want the silverware. Well, I do want the silverware. Please do leave the silverware. Let's uh, look. Yolanda sent you? Nope. 
How does she know? The question. That was just me restating a fact I am already aware of. I'm going to slowly start circling around to her okay. left, so closer to the water. It's a really dumb idea. Because <laughs> she's currently standing in the at the foot of the stairs. Yep. So I'll just move slightly to the left like near her, the wall. Her, like, yeah, your left is near the water. My left, her right. Yep. Her right. Um, she goes, Now, how about we make a little deal here? Okay. A couple of you can return and tell Yolanda that there was nothing to find here. And you're very sorry, but I, I am merely a young noblewoman. And the rest of you could remain here with me to help. Help with what? She gestures round at the room. A few experiments of mine. I just require a little human assistance since I ran out of servants. Very well. I will go tell her and you all stay here. And he's going to like turn around and like do a real exaggerated wink at everybody. <clears throat> well, it's good to see you've got loyalty among you. Why would you do this to us, Peek? You're very trustworthy, usually. This is, seems out of character. I'm totally shocked. Make me a deception check. <laughs> uh, that's an eight. Uh, so deception is a plus zero. <laughs> that's an eight. <laughs> It's like that, is it? Get her! And I'm gonna charge her. <laughs> I thought this was gonna happen. Roll initiative, guys. <laughs> you could have breathed. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh-oh. I, 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 we cornered the party. What are else we were not, we gonna yeah, Are we not supposed to fight her? <laughs> she's, oh, no. not, she's not threatening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. She's made no moves against us. She's gonna do She's experiments on everybody. Y'all got mad at me for breaking out her gate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was the best. I liked it. The first rule of of, oh, of heists is you you leave no witnesses. Also, I just realized that she called the other woman you Yolanda when the other woman sounds like. I'm getting my own posh ladies mixed up. Oh yeah, I noticed that. Ooh, I didn't want to break your chain of thought. Uh, Peak got a thirteen. Thirteen for Peak. <clears throat> Seven for Sunset. Seven for Sunset. Oof. Eleven, Cran. Eleven for Cran. Eighteen for Raka. Eighteen for Raka. Maybe this combat. Twenty-two I for Asher. Holy moly! <laughs> you can Wish probably you. put us all to sleep. Asher. This sounds delightful. You go first. What would you like to do? All right. Uh, uh, seeing. Waste the room. Just. Yeah, seeing Raka start to barrel forward, uh, he'll take his sandstone scimitar and shield. Uh, and most would probably realize the sandstone scimitar is not, uh, you know, good for fighting. It's just made of stone, uh, not too good. But he will uh, cast Flame Blade, and as flames wreath up the side of the sandstone and superheat it, uh, he'll charge forward and make an attack. Okay, so you're charging forward, straight forward to roll your attack. Decent. Uh, 14 to hit. 14 does not hit. As it strikes towards her, like it's not so much that she dodges, it's more that he seems to glance off some sort of invisible armor of sorts that surrounds her. Like she's merely dressed in a simple silk gown, but it feels like she's protected in some way. You are quite wonderful. I uh, get a Raka. All right, Raka. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm already barreling forward. So you say, get him. And as just as you say that, I just come out of your like left hand shoulder and smash into her. Um, yeah, it's a great sword attack or a great axe attack. I'm sorry. Great axe. Yeah, great axe. Use my little thing. Good axe. It's a it's a fantastic axe. Uh, nineteen. Damn girl, you got a great axe. A nineteen will hit. It is a. I can't <laughs> okay. every time I hear great axe and great sword. I, just, I always mix them up constantly. Yeah. It's great. They're great. I like them. 
Uh, so this is a ah, three on a D12 is not good. Uh, so so eight damage total. I'm going to use the superiority die uh, to attempt a trip attack. Ooh. What did I need to do? Uh, this is a DC 13 strength saving throw or okay. prone. Strength. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm kind of like barreling into her knees at this point, probably. <laughs> like, oh, yes. not a, that's not a strong point. Woof. You see, this great axe strikes just goes down, sort of tripping and stumbling on the, back, on the flat on her back at the bottom of these steps. She is prone. Perfect. That is my turn. She is prone. And Peek, it's your turn. Uh, Peek still has the short bow out, so he's going to drop it and then draw his like rapier and dagger and charge at her and go for a double stab. All right, so you're diving into the fray. So it's Asher, Raka, and Peek all up so on her. She's prone, and you get advantage on attack rolls. Yes, you get oh, my God. Okay. Uh, that's good. Uh, 25, no crown 25 crown. for the rapier. That, that will probably hit. Okay. Rogues, man. Uh, seven damage. All right, seven. Yeah. Just to be clear, I'd like to end my turn sort of crouched right next to her. Yeah, like on one knee, ready for if somebody, or like, like if she stands up or if someone locks her over me or something like that, just at the end of my turn. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 15 for the dagger. Uh, 15 will hit. Uh... Is the dagger a D6 or a D4? Uh, D4. Oh, shoot. Uh, eight, eight points of damage. OK. And then um, sneak attack for another eight. OK. So he's just, he sees her like fall down, and he just like jumps at her, and he's like, <laughs> like stabbing <laughs> her way. <laughs> so Right. As as the three of them sort of dive into the fray and all pile on her, all three of you, you hear something in the back of your mind. Asher, Rekka, and Pete, you hear this soft whispering sound. Soft sort of voices led over and over each other. It's like, get back, get back, stay away. I need you to each make me a wisdom saving throw. Always good, always good. Oh, nat 20! Woo! Mm. Uh, You're no scaredy cat. Mm, I got a nine. <laughs> Asha? Uh, dirty 20. Okay. So, Raka. Raka, you're about to get racked. I think I might be. Raka, you take 12 points of psychic damage. Goo. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. Goo. No. Around you. Ah, I look okay still ish. And then. You're almost half. It actually takes a turn. Not quite bloodied yet. You can't physically tell that I'm injured yet. And she looks up at. The clearly most dangerous stabby stabby issue currently peak and peak you the whispering in your mind it intensifies and it builds this dissonant blaring of voices across your mind and i need to make another wisdom saving throw oh my god no. i was so I lucky that my first favorite time. things in life which are Investigation checks and wisdom saving throws. <laughs> I'm not wise. Thir it's a 13. It's a 13. That's <sighs> a f that could be better. Yep. That could be better. Okay. Could be a 14. Could be a 15. Yeah. Well, that could have been. <laughs> could be <a> 16. <laughs> that could have been worse. You take five points of psychic damage. And now. You must use your reaction to move as far away from her as you can. 
She's at the foot of the stairs, right? Is that at the foot of the staircase? So do I have to go up the stairs or can I go the... You I have towards her. Right, so okay. She's, she's so I just run. Path. I basically just run towards the back of the wall. Yeah, like so the in, furthest point away like, she, is the back yeah. of the room and then beyond that is the secret room with the with the uh, statue. The fountain. Okay, yeah. so Pete, Pete just going? like grabs his ears like... Aah! And then he just runs <laughs> like the opposite direction. And I, do I take an opportunity attack? Or is she still prone? She's still prone. She get up? Is she still prone? Um, she's not finished her turn yet. Um, she's not going to take an opportunity to attack. As you fully off to the back of the room, she's going to take her opportunity to just stand up and brush the dust from her skirts and give a little smile. And Conferin, it's your turn. This is what I signed up for. Uh, I'm gonna run across. I have a minotaur. <laughs> uh, run straight up, unsheathing my great axe. Or my, I'm sorry, not my great axe, my, my great sword. Um, and as I unsheath it, you start seeing it crackle um, with electricity. Um, and in a spin, uh, I'm gonna try and hit her with booming blade. All right. Uh, yeah. Good night, great. <laughs> Um, 14? 14 does not hit. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Um, but bonus action. Um, I have hammering horns. Um, so I'm going to try and use my horns to uh, sort of shove her. So a- as I miss, um, I like drop my sword to my left and just ran right into her with my horns, using my momentum to carry forward. Okay. Um, and that is... I have to hit her with it, though. Yes. Um... I th- nope, it's cocked. Um, that's even worse. Uh, no, it's an eight to hit. That does not hit. Oh, this. I'm gonna scream. I'm gonna mute myself. <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> you probably set your sword against me because I was crouched next to her on her left. So you probably went bloop and like rested. <laughs> Put on- um. All right. So then I guess that's my bonus action. That's my movement. That's my action. So I guess my free action. I'll re hold my sword. Re hold. Re hold. Sure. <laughs> Um, readjust? and like narrow, my, narrow, yeah, I readjust myself, my, my grip, um, and just stare her down with like terrible yellow eyes. No words, back. and sunset, it's your turn. I still have my daggers in my hands, so I'm gonna throw one at her. I'm staying right where I'm at, but I'm throwing my dagger at her. Uh, not dagger, dart, dart. All right, throw your dots. This one. Y'all That's had to attack 12. her. That's 12. <laughs> 12 will not hit. She was on to us, crown friend. We had to. <laughs> I could have intimidated her. I could uh, see it in her uh, eyes. She knew. <laughs> I didn't do anything else. You were in her basement. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a big guy. Um, you've got your bonus action still. If you actually, I'm gonna go check on the uh, check on uh, Peak, see how he's doing in the room with the fountain. Peak, oh. how are you doing? Peak is uh, so as soon as I like have hit the farthest possible point from her, I'm good, right? Yes. Like I've made it and I'm just like, you've run away. You're you're fine. Okay. Oh, is it my turn now? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what peaks 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 in the corner somewhere, just like like wiping the sweat off of his face. Yeah. All right. Currently she's well currently she's about, you know, fifty feet away at the foot of the stairs. You're safe now. But yes, Asha, it's your turn. So all up in the, in the front of the lovely Yolanda Bright. Yeah. So uh, Asher walked peak, uh, run away, and the Minotaur poof, slam in. Uh, I'm sure he's doing something useful, and he'll swing the scimitar up and try another flame blade attack. All right. Roll uh, attack. Even worse this time, a twelve. That does not we, we used all of our good rolls breaking into this place, but there was yeah. no security. Period. <laughs> yeah. We are the bane of doors. Security. She had guard dogs. 
<laughs> Kill those of us in a turn. <laughs> Lock the front door. Hmm, maybe I should try something other than fire. Oh, yeah, I don't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's all you get. Uh, Racker, it's your turn. All right, Racker will just kind of stand up from where he was st- sitting there. Uh, and he's just going to say, no, no, down on the ground, and he'll swing again. <laughs> Right. <laughs> come on, come on. Uh, th- that is a. It's a nineteen again. That will hit. All right. I didn't use my tray this time. You won't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> He's lying. I, uh, I'm lying. I... <laughs> well, why would I lie about this? I got a one on the D twelve, <laughs> oh. but I got an eight on the, uh, the the battle master dice so she has to make another dc 13 strength save uh, that was it. Uh, she just makes it all right she stands she's really good because she's not, <laughs> not looking good how deep That's does right. my axe sink into her here with the nine damage yeah, she's still she's still not dead yet all right and she's still Looking she like will be. Got some confidence in this situation. She still has confidence in the situation. That's what the look on her face says. Oh fuck me. <laughs> uh, Peak is going to. You said he was fifty feet away. Yes. So I think he. Oh man, he he's he's gonna dash in. Oh, he's just gonna dash up to where he dropped the short bow, and uh. He's going to pick up the short bow and shoot at her with that. All right. Bro. I have a feeling once we kill her, it's going to... We're not going <sighs> to Got a one. That can run doesn't if hit. Get rid of her. <laughs> to hit? <laughs> yeah, I got a one to hit. Oh, no. <laughs> this is our sails over. He's still all messed up from being psychically blasted down earlier. Back. So he he's just like... Like, uh, twing, and he and- like hits the ceiling or something. <laughs> Bounces off my helmet. <laughs> yeah, that's that's his whole turn. He's just kind of kneeling on the ground with a short bow. Like, how the hell did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> so, Racker and Asher, the whispers are rising in your mind again, and Crumpler, and this time oh. you hear them too. Oh, Make some saving throws, please. Oh no, she's doing it again. <laughs> Got a 13 over here. <gasps> Natural 20. Yay. Was that a 13 from? Yeah, 13 for me. Sam, you look like you have the dice as your eye. 16, <laughs> yeah. I can't actually read the dice that are on your face. No, I know. I got to read it or something. <laughs> Rack, Rack and you're fine. Asher? <clears throat> Take 10 points of psychic damage. 10 points. Okay. And then she reaches out and grabs and places her hand on you, Raka. Get your hands off me! And ah, so, well, she actually knows she's going to have to attempt to grab you because that's a melee attack. All right. I don't think she's actually going to succeed on this. Uh, so that is thirteen. Nope. You put your arm on him today, didn't you? <laughs> I did put my armor on, yeah. She reaches out and like pours at your armor a bit. <laughs> and sort of Is she a cat? <laughs> Alright. I will use my uh, uh my reaction to cast repost, which is the third battle master trait that I have. When someone misses, I can make one melee attack against them. Alright. Slice her hand off. Yeah, uh, that's a over 20. That's an over 20, and over 20 will hit. 24, I think, yep. Yeah. All right. Uh. 17 damage. <laughs> oh my god! Ouch! That's the last move Sweet. I got. <laughs> I'll attempt to cut her hand off in the process. If you... I'll, s- I'll say you I get... Can... I'll say you... Three of her fingers. You can get three of her fingers. All right. I'll take from the pinky to the middle. Oh, she'll never type again. It's like, 
blood dripping down her hand. And now, for the first time since she walked into her basement, the sort of look of smug confidence on her face slips. And you see the edge of fear in her eyes and also anger. I'm in danger. <laughs> but Cren, Crenferin, it's your turn. So seeing that, Cranfarin, his grip tightens on his greatsword and he, as he goes, there it is. And I'm going to swing with my greatsword again, um, booming blade. Uh, this time his lightning crackles up, up this metal. Please, please, please. God damn it. The exact same roll I got last time. 14. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to horns her <laughs> as, I, as I miss. All right. we, come on, come on. Use my horns, come please. I made you to fight, you fuck. God damn it. That's a two. All right. Let's just solve you of any embarrassing. Sunset, it's your turn. Oh. All right, so I'm on the other end of the room, but I'm not inside the fountain room. I had just peeked in to okay. check on Pete. In which case, you're about 30 feet away from her. Perfect. I am going to run and try to get behind her. She is, she's still at the foot of this. She's still in the doorway to the staircase. Can I jump over her? You can try. I want to uh, try. Maybe I'll let you do the choice this time. Athletics or acrobatics to try and get past her and get behind her. Oh, acrobatics. That's an 18 plus five. I'll say yes. You can, she's not a very tall woman. This cat monk figure just sails over her and now you're behind her at the, at, in the, at the foot of the stairwell. All right, can, um, since I am now behind her, that was my action, correct? I did it. I'll give you, I'll let you have your action still. I'd say that's movement. All right. I am going to um, unarmed strike her from behind. All right. Get her in the, get her in the spine or something. That's a four. That will not hit. No. Yeah, no, I probably like went right past her head. And or maybe I slipped on the last stair. Look, it was stylish. All right, uh, that that ends my turn. <laughs> you looked cool doing it. At least yeah, that counts. Yeah. Asha, Asha, what are you going to do about this situation? Well, something, please. <laughs> I I would try something, uh, but as the psychic damage took effect the last round. Um, Asher tried to maintain the, the, the flame on the blade, uh, but he couldn't quite concentrate on it, and the, the flame just subsides, and it's just a superheated uh, stone scimitar. He looks in frustration, and he was about to cast a flaming sphere behind, but now there's a cat in the way. Things are all wrong. Uh, create bonfire right on top of her. Uh, deck oh. save. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Great bonfire. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. So it's yeah, a, no, a can trip. Spell. It is in. I was trying to remember. It's a while since I used it. Great bonfire. Any creature. It's thirty saving throw. And that is definitely cocked. Uh-uh. What should we see on this? Only twelve. Uh, uh. <laughs> is that good? I don't know what that means. <laughs> that's, that's that's the case if she just kind of dodges aside and she's doing a little kind of dance to like get the sparks off her, but she's not on fire. Damn. Uh, but th- th- there's definitely a little tasty little fire to burn the witch. <laughs> I think James has died. <laughs> but uh, Rack. 
Um, and you are you you're still up in in front uh, of me? I'm I'm gonna back away. Actually, I'll take like ten or fifteen feet back. Okay. Um, Raka, what would you like to do? Um. Hmm. I would like to hold my action for if she attacks anybody. Yeah. Uh, with spell or blade or whatever she's got. Uh, and I will just tell her, no, no, you just sit in that fire and die like a good girl. <laughs> Jesus. That's my turn. Okay. Peek. Peek. Please. Save them. Okay. Uh, Peek, after having missed so terribly with the short bow, is going to do a stupid thing. He's going to take the rope off of his shoulder and and like twirl it into a little like lasso thing and he's going to run at her and try to get both of her arms in the lasso and then pull it tight at the last second. So she can't use her hands anymore. Returning here right here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that's what that's what he's going to try to do. I don't know how you want to roll that, but mm, He's trying to tie her up kind of. Yeah, yeah, no. I see what you're trying to do. I'm just I'm just having a think here. Um, roll it as an unarmed attack, so sort of a non an, an attack without proficiency. So just a straight attack roll. Yes. Are you sure? Minus. <laughs> it's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> Try and lasso her, but lassoing someone in a small stairwell, while she's surrounded by three other people, is. <clears throat> Not quite as easy as you thought it would be. Okay. Well, he, he sees that it fails miserably. He, he just drops the rope. He's like, that didn't work either. <laughs> He's like, go. damn it. <laughs> Try the next thing next time. <laughs> All right. So Yolanda, she, she turns around to see Sunset there on the stairs. She's just clutching the blood, like trickling down the back of her hand, like dripping off her elbow from where she's lost these fingers just burn like a good witch <laughs> and sunset conferen and raka the whispers of zack make those wisdom saving throws please what whispers right. i didn't hear any whispers any other time you will be consumed in the darkness this fucks me over 17 17? No, they actually fade away. I got a six. <laughs> you said wisdom saving throw? Yes, yes. Five, ten. Okay, so Raka and Kranfur, and you're the one mm -hmm. taking damage. Would I consider this an attack, Dungeon Master? This I'm glad I'm glad to take the damage first. This is a passive effect. Whether you consider mm -hmm. it an attack or not, I will leave to your your judgment. All right. I'll let's take the damage and see if I'm still like <laughs> That is uh, 13 points of psychic damage. Oh, God. Jesus. I mean, I'm still technically awake. <clears throat> yeah, I'm alive. And then, uh, would I consider this an attack? I probably would. I mean, but... it hurts. Yeah, I would. I, I'll, I'll impose a disadvantage on this attack on myself just because I'm being psychically attacked. That's, that's that makes... up to that is, that is, yeah. this is, you. Can have... I'll RP that. That makes sense to me. He's giving himself disadvantage. In this fight, they do not need it. Doesn't matter. I got a 19. <laughs> All right. That's three 19s in a row. I keep roll, rolling 14. Roll your damage. All right. You this bring is her just... down before she yeah. can roll this. I got a two. <laughs> she's not there yet. <clears throat> but she's... You see her looking around, looking to the staircase, really exciting that now her exit is blocked off. And things are not going her way as well as much as much as they were before and she reaches up and raises her hands I call on you I call on you from the depths of the darkness my lord of dark waters and dark places I call on you lend me your strength lend me your arms oh the the new alarms are coming oh Jesus and for all around her, these tendrils of dark energy erupt from the ground in this twisting circle. Dark. Tend 
It's called like tendrils. Tendrils. Um, <laughs> I guess they call tendrils. And everyone within ten feet of her. Undulating tendrils. Which is hey Sam, don't say that ever again. Which is definitely Raka, Cran, Cranfer, and, and Sunset. Uh, Peak, and Asher. I don't know if you're within. Would consider yourself within t- ten feet of her. Yeah, I'm backed away fifteen feet, so I'm probably okay. just safe. It, it's up to you how far I threw the lasso. It depends how long <laughs> how long you would consider an appropriate lassoing distance. Uh, I I got I don't know like twenty feet. I mean, the room's only that 30 feet. That's actually explain why you missed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's glass everywhere. You're trying to lasso someone from 30 feet away across like a table of a chemical apparatus. That, that, hmm. That's why you missed. If this is the uh, wisdom saving throw, I'm dead. No, <laughs> I might no. be as well. I need you to make me a strength saving throw, please. Mm. I'm good at those. Come on, this. He's going to roll a one. He's going to roll a one. Two away from me. 14. 17! That's a 14. That is three successes. So you'll be taking half damage. (laughs) Fuck you, ghoul. Damn it. That was a lot of dice. If I I survive this, I'm good. She doesn't really have an option. She said lots of dice or no dice. She did six damage. (laughs) Under Master. It's six. And another six. And a five. And then a three. It's a nine. Jeez. It's a 14. Half. What is happening? You take seven points of necrotic damage. All right. Uh, Raka goes, get yeah. your tentacles away from me. Oh, poof, and, and she... falls to the ground. <laughs> All right. I'm still alive. You're still alive. And she's going to attempt to try and sort of push her way past sunset if sunset's still up. But it's a narrow staircase and if you don't want to let her pass sunset, she can't get past. I don't want to let her pass, but I fell and I don't think I had the uh, my turn come around yet for me to get up. So I don't know if I, I can grab her leg as she walks by. Opportunity of attack. Uh, she's, she's trying, trying to She's trying to get by? Yeah, you can make it a- yeah, if she's trying to escape, I'm going to try and s- slash at her as well. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. She's trying to move away. All right, I've got your reaction still. You can opportunity attack. Mm-hmm. Come on. All right, I'm going to attack her uh, legs. Okay. I'm going to grab her legs. <sighs> oh, no, Drew. I keep doing the same. <laughs> what you the same roll every <laughs> time. Melt it down. Melt that die down. 19. <laughs> All right. Roll and that's damage. my claws attack. Yeah, so. roll your damage. Put that one in the lake with the dead fish. <laughs> this is my favorite dice, though. Five. All right, five points of damage. So she she pushes her way past you, but she's, she's limping and sort of stumbling up these stairs, trailing blood and like clutching at her fingers and like so she's made it past you. She's not dead, but she is not looking good in the slightest. And Conferen, it's your turn. Chasen. Chasen, I'm gonna jump over Sunset if possible and follow her up these stairs. If she I can't... see him jumping over me, I'm gonna curl into the smallest ball I possibly can so he doesn't land on me. Okay. Yeah, as as I, as Cranfair and like grab their great sword, I think it scrapes across the stone as they jump. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Chris like showering some sparks over sunset. Um, as they, let, as they let loose like a Rah! running up. I'm gonna try and slash at her, please, for the love of God. Please roll, God, man, you can do it. Got this. Please. Good roll. Here we go. This is this is the one. This is the one. This that one. That's a five plus four. <laughs> that's nine. But <laughs> but action surge. I'm gonna attack again. Yeah. Whoops. Action surge for my great sword. I attack again, so I swing and it clatters against the stone and I adjust my grip and then swing back across her back. Please. God, fuck, God, it's a six. What? I'm gonna try, wait, no, I can't. Um, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna use second wind short um to get a D10 plus two. Doesn't that back. use your bonus action as well? As can you do that and action surge? Yes. Okay, go for it then. Fighters, uh, I don't ever play fighters. So yeah. Second week's bonus action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I won't be able to use my horns, but that's okay. Okay. I haven't been able to hit her for three turns, so who cares? Um, so I, good, not unconscious. <laughs> so I, I regain seven hit points. All right, sunset. Hey, thanks. The Minotaur goes charging past you up these stairs, well, charging as fast as you can charge on a spiral staircase. It's not ideal fighting conditions for great swords. No, no, it's apparently not. nothing is. Uh, okay, so I do have one question. If I were to go up the stairs, would I be able to get past Cran? I'd say if Cran would let you go past, yes. Okay, so that's what I'm planning on doing. I am planning on uh, getting up and running up the stairs and getting squeezing past Cran if he lets me. Do you, you get up? You get up to Cran. Um, how injured are you? Not as. I I'm almost half. So. Okay. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll let you. I'll probably like raise a leg. <laughs> so you can clamor under. Yeah, and I'll, I'll do that. Um, is she? Uh, let's see. That wasn't very far up ahead of you. You can move more. faster than she can. All right, yeah, no, then I'm definitely going to catch up to her you and catch up with her. Yeah, I'm going to catch up with her and do um, my uh, unarmed attack. All right. Let's see if you can bring this down. She's just like struggling up this staircase. That was a three. To hit? I miss. Yes, yeah. it's a hit. No. She's no. Quite, she's um, Look, he's on her side this evening. Yeah, no. Um, let's see. Did I take all of my actions and bonus action? Uh, I believe you still got your bonus action. Yes. Can I? Uh, I would like to try to grapple her on yeah, my. You can't do, I can't do grapples. I think you can grapple with her. That's an action, I believe. Action, but you, you can attack her. You can make an unarmed attack. Oh, yeah. Okay, then I'll do that. Yeah. That one's a 16. That will hit. Awesome. Um, and then let's see. One more thing. I believe I can also do my Fury of Blows. Uh, that takes key. one key. You spend your key point? Uh, yeah. Nothing. Yes, I'll spend my key point uh, to do my theory of blows. Uh, that was a th three plus three for the unarmed yeah, strike. That, that, yeah, the theory of blows is your bonus action, so that makes, rather than it being one attack, that gives you uh, two attacks as your bonus action. So you'll have yeah. your first attack that missed, then your two bonus, two attacks. Okay. Bonus action. All right, so that would be a six damage then. Okay, six damage total. And, all right. So as she sort of is struggling and limping her way up the staircase, she dodges nimbly aside from the Minotaur's greatsword, only to find shooting out between the Minotaur's leg comes this, like, cat, basically. Basically. And just, like, staring down, and you, as she sort of slumps down across the stairs in front of you. And you hear the gasp. The waters will destroy you all. Waters will rise. It will be destroyed. And then she slumps down and she is dead. You are out of it. Technically, no, you're not out of initiative. Asher, it's your turn. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Technically, excuse me, I have to fail more? <laughs> no, no. She's dead. <laughs> Raka survives. But there's something else important going on. It depends what happened, what Asher does in this turn, really. <laughs> okay. Uh, how far up the staircase was this per scuffle? Um, oh, I'm laying in I'd say, the given it's a spiral staircase, and far enough that it's out of sight. So they headed okay. up the staircase? 
given the the sounds I've heard, uh, am I able to tell that uh, Yolanda has perished? Mm, I've heard, at this point, you've heard the scratching of sword on stone and, like, <laughs> generic fright noises. Yes. Not clear right, so what's happening. Asher has a bit of a decision here. Uh, he runs up to, uh, to the bottom of the stairs and he's about to go up and release a flaming sphere all the way up and just clear out whatever was up there. Um, but he stops for a moment and looks down at Raka. Uh, fight or love, he'll go down <laughs> and embrace Raka in a, a kiss on the lips with the red oh. rose and the rose petals oh, yeah. lighting a candle as he does and donning the gown if he can <laughs> and cast cure wounds at second level for Raka. <laughs> That was beautiful. <laughs> yes. All right. So that is um, 10 points of healing. <laughs> All right. Raka. Wow. Come so I, I wake up with this lovely vision in front of me. <laughs> oh, beautiful creature. And I'll, I'll sit up and go, oh, oh, it's you. Huh? Where <laughs> am I? <laughs> uh, you're, you're still at the bottom of the stairs. I, I don't know if they've... And it'll just look at him longingly. <laughs> you'll, you'll don't mind if I just sit here for a while. <laughs> yes, uh, I'll protect you. That's my turn. You're no longer in initiative. You don't need to worry about turns any longer at this point. You are freed from the shackles of turn order. Great. Uh, putting away great sword, Cranfuren's massive fist clamps down on Yolanda's back, grips her gown, and hoists her up. And throws her over his shoulder as they're walking her down downstairs. Oh, he's going downstairs? Okay, I'm going to follow downstairs. Um, but I'm also going to say, she said waters rise. She said waters rise. Water. Um, People die, they say crazy shit every time. And then poof, throw her down. Like, not even while we're at the base of the stairs, throw her down the stairs. Holy cow! <laughs> this body comes flying out of the tunnel. Yes, the limp body of Yolanda comes falling down the bottom of the stairs. So when Peek sees oh. her her dead and mangled body, he's gonna take one of the bottles of wine and just open it and just start drinking it and then give some to Raka. Like, here, you probably need this. Um. So, so uh, she's dead now, yes? At, at What do we do? Uh, at the stairs, I think uh, I'd look towards sunset and say, if she said that, I'd, with what she could do, probably stay away from the uh, any water down here. As they walk downstairs, and make sure Rock is alive. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting against the the nearest wall to the stairs, just to, drinking a bottle of really good wine. Get away from the That's water. Great. Get get away from the water. Uh, just, should we just go up? Go up get out of here. Minus, well, yeah. Let let let's go. Let's go up. Let's, I think I think we take we take her her uh, rings I, as proof of her her death, and then we just go back and get the money and leave town, and never have, come back. I have her notes. We can let's let's just leave. I turn right back around and go up the stairs. Okay. The job is done. Peek's gonna there. Peek's gonna search her body though. All right. He's looking for something like distinctive, like a a a, a house crest Wait, or a ring or something. An investigation check. I'd love investigation. Body. 15. 15. <clears throat> so, I mean, she's wearing a, a very fancy, very obvious, the, the, the gold choker necklace. She's got a signet ring on one finger. She's got more more gold rings pretty much on almost every other finger. Peek's taken all of it. Are there actually, all the rings, take, half, of them, all like, the half of them don't actually seem to be gold. They're just goldish rings. Okay. Um... But it's you notice know, that t- t- tucked under the inside of her dress, there is a fine silver chain, and on the end of it, this um, pendant of dark blue-green glass, sort of like sea glass. Okay. Uh, yeah, Peek's just he's just taking everything off and just shoving it into his backpack real quick. He's just like, all right, proof. We have proof. More proof. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay, and then he he's gonna go up the stairs. <laughs> okay. I'm crawling on my hands and knees up the stairs. Yeah. Yes, uh, c- come on, Raka. Asher will uh, h- uh, help Raka up and uh, escort oh, him up the oh, stairs. Thanks, thanks, thanks. You can hear, you can hear the sounds of the fountain. Seem to be growing louder. 
the sound of flowing water intensifying as you're heading up the stairs. Cran, Cran is still downstairs. Oh yes, Cran is still downstairs. You can see um, the water previously, like was pouring down. The statue is sort of just draining away into the pool at the base. The water is still flowing from where it's flowing from, but it does not appear to be draining away anywhere anymore. And it's beginning to pool around the, the base of the statue in the in the in the secret room, off the secret cellar. Uh, I'm 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 the only one down there, right? Yeah, Great. yeah, you are. Um, awesome. <laughs> that's that's what I love to hear. <laughs> um, surprising. Great. Um, so Cranfrian run turns around, bounds up the stairs like two or three at a time, um, shouting, um, "Run!" Take out my great my my mace if possible, and start bash or my mall. Sorry, and start bashing some of the, like the the sides of this uh. Um, staircase see if I can cause it to kind of collapse in. All right, make me make me a strength check. Let's let's get some staircase smashing going on here behind you. I am running faster. Please. If I roll high I'm on this, to... I'm gonna scream. <laughs> you can do it. I'm prepared. I didn't do it. Um that's a 12. <laughs> you can definitely get some bits of stone off it's but it is as as mentioned earlier, it is a well built Underground complex. Mm. So there's some chunks of foam coming off, but not not enough to block it. Just enough to like okay. add a bit of ribble to the ground. Okay, in that case, just put my spec or my ball back, and as I'm still running upstairs, screaming. Yes, you can see water lapping at the base of the stairs, but behind you, but if you all make your way back up the very excessively long spiral staircase. And up, and up, um, and find oh, yourself piling as long as last time. <laughs> out the wardrobe, into the bedroom upstairs. It still appears to be as you left it. Um. Uh, so Cran like barrels through. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. says, "Water's I, coming." I I've I'm out I'm out the bedroom. I am am down the stairs. I am going through the front door. All right. So you come to the front door. The the, the front door is you can see it's barred from the inside. Like there's a big like bolts across it. A yeah. uh, quick detour. Asher is gonna grab some of the jewelry he saw before. Uh, the the Tilbor uh, crafted jewelry. All right. It's grabbing the, <laughs> the jewelry from the from the dressing table. Yeah, you can grab your jewelry. Yeah, out the front mm. door. So bolts. Yeah, no, I'm undoing the bolts as fast as I can, if I can. Yep. Cran will follow to the front door. Out the front door. I, I bust open the front door. I, I'm not stealthy. I'm, I, I throw these things. They bounce off the side of the door walls. So as you throw these front doors open, you can see between the cracks in the floorboards of like the hallway downstairs, you can see water start to well up between the cracks. <laughs> Like, Azure, universe, like burst pipes, sort of like. Shh, shh. Azure, I can't run anymore. Take my hand, and I'm gonna hold my hand up towards Azure. Uh, I'll, I'll do you one better, uh, and I'll wild shape into a mule uh, and let him climb on. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> this is perfect. I'll climb um, on. Yeah. So as you go bursting out the front doors, you can see ahead of you. You can see torchlight from around the gateway of the house. You can see the light of several torches and the attention of a, a bunch of about, let's say, four guards that turn to look at you as you come bursting free from the house. And the one nearest the front says, uh, drop all your weapons, put your hands in the air, and come. Cran does not stop running. <laughs> no. <laughs> I. I, 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 I then stop, stop. And then you see this minotaur that. Two in, cats. I'm, I'm charging. Dwarf, dwarf on a donkey. <laughs> I'm, I'm charging. I'm charging the gates to remove them so we can escape. Peak. Peak is yeah. gonna like take one of the rings out that he has, uh, like one of the ones that has the seal. He's gonna run up to the guards and be like, "We we work for her, uh, but we need to run now. Explosion basement. Run." Oh, and well, then give him point, the ring, and then he's gonna try to keep running. 
Okay, well, the guards, the first guards sort of just pile to one side as they see a minotaur barreling towards them because and you're crashing out the gates. They, yeah. They just. Did you just kind of thrust the ring at them and keep running? Yeah, but he says all that while he's running past. He's like, look, seal, Wait, lady, downstairs, what? explosion. I, and the I, mule I, at 40 I, speed, it just clop, 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 clop. <laughs> and I'm right, I'm right next to them. I didn't catch that. Wait, stop, stop, thieves. Fire. Not thieves, what not thieves. What? And you can see the house behind, so he's like, like, water pooling around the base of the house, starting to like, sink almost into the ground and the, just the guards looking from you to them and go just stop them and you know what there is no better point I I could continue this through with an armed chase through the city but I think this is a good point to end tonight's session as a minotaur two tabaxi and a dwarf riding a mule <laughs> charge out of this house past the bemused guards. I want fan art. Turn to chase them <laughs> down into this city. The house behind them sinking as the waters rise. Damn. Amazing. That, that, that's where we're going to finish. Hey, listen, successful mission, got paid first. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's why I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I do now see why you were so insistent on payment in advance. <laughs> Because if it, if the house wasn't going to sink, it was either going to be destroyed by a minotaur or set on fire. Like we knew <laughs> it was going to go poorly. Something was going to happen. Yeah. You never do anything for free. Yep. Yeah, it's never do anything. When you when you're good at destroying houses, you don't do it for free. <laughs> no, no. Although, although I would do it for free if I does. I've... The town have a literal <laughs> bridge that we can burn on the way out. <laughs> you know what? Yes, yes. I'm going to say that this town is known for its elegant wooden bridge. <laughs> It was built 360 years ago by the king who founded the town. It is their prime tourist attraction. Hey, hey, uh, Tess, can you spend the next 40 minutes describing the history and lore and deep-seated connections of this bridge so that I can cry over the wood that we burn as we leave? <clears throat> In the year 1216... Anyways, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> we're all done. <laughs> you think I cannot ad-lib 40 minutes about a bridge? <laughs> Yes, yes, we are done at a slightly earlier time than normal, but you know, yep. one shots be, be one shotting. Hey man, D and D ends when D and D ends. Yes, yep. so it ends when the story ends. Story yes. ends. Yes. So, um, next week, um, at the same time we started tonight, so seven p.m. Eastern, mm -hmm. um, local two people will be back with a new campaign. A new campaign, right? Party foul. Um, sure party foul crazy as this one shot no uh, absolutely not um the premise is where it's just a home game um that we're streaming it's gonna be light fun uh we're gonna fight goblins spiders classic D, &D stuff um and it's got a pretty wacky party from what it seems like what we have so far we might move some crates from one side of yeah. the room to another side of a room yeah and we might move them back is the thing so i want to sit on them we can do that as well <laughs> We could charge a copper per ride. Anything for XP. Yes, and Pantheon will be back for season two next Friday at six thirty Eastern. Mm -hmm. And Pantheon being a historical campaign set in, I think they're still in ancient Greece. They were in ancient Greece last time I checked. Mm -hmm. Ancient Greco-Roman yes. uh, themed D and D. I think there's more I Minotaurs in it. They probably yeah, I was gonna say probably also have yeah, if you want more if you want more minotaurs, they're in there. What do you think? And keep your eyes open. There are new and exciting things upcoming on the channel on other days mm -hmm. and at other times with other places. Uh, I mean, it's all join here. us on the other Discord people. and play with us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um Much I, like I run community I run games in the community. Uh I believe James runs some games in the community. Half time I run games as well. Yes. Uh, I run too many games, but Yes, come play with us, chat with us. Um, I like chatting with people. Yes. Come talk to me. Come talk to me in Discord. It's not as scary as it sounds. She's actually very friendly. Yeah, I put the Discord in chat if you want to join, if you're new or if you're unfamiliar with the Discord. Yes. And also, if you want to understand however witchcraft Sam is doing. 
<laughs> oh my god, that was amazing. I, I, I'm actually amazed. amazed. But yes, um, that will be all for tonight. It is currently almost half three in the morning. For so us. I think it's time to go to bed. Yeah. So, yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Have Have a good night. Night. Thanks for hanging out with us. Bye. Well done, and we're off.